I dropped my burrito. One sec. One sec. It's okay. It, it only spilled a little bit. I ate a full chicken burrito in 10 minutes. Yeah, baby. Fastest I've ever eaten one. Right before stream two. Ooh. <laughs> I dropped my burrito once. <laughs> There's never a smooth way to come into chat. Like, just... There's ne <laughs> there's never a smooth way to introduce yourself. You just gotta go with whatever's at the top of your head. Whew. <laughs> Whew. I was busy cleaning up my burrito. What were y'all up to? Oh. Oh, gosh. Never a good way to... What? Don't read into it. Don't read into it. I don't don't think about it too hard. Whew. Hi Goblin, how's it going? We are doing art this evening, and I have a special special lesson for everybody. I think some people may enjoy this very much. Good evening to you. Hi hey, Skeddy, what's up? Also, books. Congratulations on that puppy. I hope you have fun with that puppy. I hope. I hope it's not too much trouble, and it's it's a good, well-behaved one. If not, I'm sure you'll love it anyways. Try starting with the Disney villain song. <laughs> Which song is that one you're quoting? Oh, that's the villain's uh, friends on the other side. That is a good one. For my intro into Gobble Streamers, and I'm just now getting your streams. Welcome in! How you doing, Cephila? Cephila? I hope you're doing well. I'm gonna start start reading so I can catch up before this lesson begins because it is a very, very important lesson. I think a lot of you are gonna like it. <sighs> it's a good bean change my mind. I could be evil. I could be evil. Maybe if I tried a bit harder. And he's still refusing to sing good little girl. Listen, anytime there's spoken word in a song, my brain stops. <laughs> There's no tune. There's no way of doing it. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. The song stops dead in its tracks for me. Jeez. Feeling arc? Yes, indeed. It's already begun. It's a... It's an uphill climb. Or a slow downhill <laughs> fall, if you think about it that way. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm, I'm learning from the best. Camp Goofballs really did educate me. I learned... too much, actually. <laughs> Sometimes you learn things against your will when you hang out with your buds. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make sure that the sound is turned up. It is very, very low. That's why. Alright. Ooh. Ooh, that's loud. Good morning. It's evening, actually. It's 6 p.m. Jeez. Jeez. I think she's seen the things these years have had to listen to and learn. Also, kept my word. Thank you for the gift. So, I will not share these lessons because that's just too evil. That's too much, even for me. Uh, kept my word. Thank you for the reason of happy 19 months. 19 months. Let's go. Thank you very much. Welcome back in. Happy Monday. <laughs> and Maria, jeez, thank you for the five gifted subs. Uh, oh gosh, there's so many redeems. Maria, thank you for the head pats. <laughs> Ooh, and the earrings. Mind those. <laughs> also, Angelson, thank you for the breathe redeem. Davidino, I will get to the song in a little bit. Thank you for your patience. Okay. You ever work at Santa's workshop? Nah. It's too cold up there. Guy! Thank you for the resub. Welcome back. Happy 19 months. Oh, another one. 19 months of yelling at you about junk and I've still yet to find anything better. Glad I stumbled into this community and into your streams. They've genuinely changed my life for the better. Also, you're cute. 
I will... I will accept that one. I will accept that. Thank you very much. <gasps> Onyx, thank you for the resub. 19 months. Oh my gosh, all my mods are back. They're saying things and I have to read them. 19 months of subs for the goodest baby honey cup. Let's keep that number going. Thank you. My mods are too nice. They're so nice. I don't know what to do with myself. I will accept it, guys. I will. I will have to. It was, it was in a sub. It was in a sub, so I had to read it and accept it. Impact, thank you for the posture check. Nice. Excuse me. <laughs> Burrito's coming back up. <laughs> oh, son, hey ya. Color Shadow, thank you for the resub. Happy nine months. Congrats on your stream, baby. And Bill, thank you for the hydrate. Nice. Mm, good. Blunt traps. <laughs> Blunt traps, thank you. <laughs> Great name, by the way. Thank you for the five gifted subs. An anonymous. Thank you for the ten gifted subs. Hiden there. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hiden. Napalm, thank you for the resub. Happy 18 months. Oh, don't worry. I still... <laughs> I ate it with my hands. I grabbed a bunch of it with my hands and just shoved it into my mouth before getting on stream. It was a mess, but it was delicious. Blah, 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 blah. Blunt wraps. Thank you for another five gifted subs. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> and Death, thank you for the gifted sub. Ketzer, thank you for the resub. Happy two months. Welcome back. And Scuddybird, thank you for the sub. Hello. Welcome to the tavern. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> Makes me laugh. Critic, thank you for the thousand shinies. Here's the payment for the art course. My bad for the late payment. Of course, of course, it is all good. In fact, this is actually a free course. That's just a tip. I appreciate it. <laughs> Silgard, thank you for the resub. Happy ten months. Welcome back. Congratulations. I like the sheen of your hair. You must use some top quality hair conditioner. It's oil. Slather her up with cooking oil. Keeps it smooth. <laughs> and Wolfson, thank you for the hundred shinies. Cyberman J, thank you for the resub. Happy anniversary. You know what? I like your new model. Thank you. I like it too. I like it so much. So excited for the next one. But I love this one so much. I don't want to get rid of it. Not that I get rid of the models. They just disappear. And Data Chicken, thank you for the gifted sub. Critic, thank you for the 500 Chinese. Follow on drown the gobble in compliments. I can, I can, I can take it. I can take him. I can take him. Yeah, I can, I can take him. Do your worst. Ketzer, thank you for the five gifted subs. That is a lot. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Ooh, Gary, just some, <laughs> just some nice old olive oil. Mmm, mmm. Run your fingers through it and everything. Goes through, no knots. <laughs> Fancier, hey. I'm doing pretty good. I'm just relaxing. Down through the list. Now, ah, I can breathe a little bit. Also, welcome, Insane. You're on time. We haven't started the lesson yet. We got a little bit longer till we get to that. Ogre, thank you for the hundred shinies. You do drop these. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Ogre. I do appreciate pocket change. It's nice. It makes a lot of noise. I actually have a, a, a jar of pocket change that I've just kept. And it's so... I don't want to count it. It's got so many pennies and dimes and quarters. I don't want to count those. It's so much. I'm going to be... I'm going to go to have, have to go to a bank at some point and just drop it on someone's desk and go count it for me and then put it in my account or better yet give it to me in once so i can feel rich <laughs> Pes your voice is soothing and you're adorable when you're flustered thank you i'll, I'll take that as a compliment 
Got all the shrines in master mode of Breath of the Wild. <gasps> that is really cool, actually. I've, I'm trying to do that right now. Well, not right now. I tried to do that a couple months ago and I fall off. Hungry for hippo. Thank you for the resub. Happy two months. Happy to get you live. Happy to be live. Let's go. And Mega Scrub, thank you for the 500 Chinese. Ooh. Uh, Ground Honey compliments. Don't mind if I do. Oh. Not upon myself. I was the best cob been. Been a while since I've been on one of the amazing streams. Thank, thank you. I'm glad you like my streams. And should have been Jedi. Thank you for the 100 Chinese. Do I appreciate them? And Scuddy Buddy, thank you for the 300. Investing in the home defense changed. <laughs> it can be weaponized. It's that heavy. It's a lot. Any pocket change I collect goes right in there. And for the most part, like, I, I have a little rule with myself where if I want to make sure I don't overspend when I go to hang out with my friends, I make sure that I have cash. So I always pay in cash and that way I know how much I'm actually paying. Like, there's, it's a weird little brain trick. But it also means I get change back and I can put it in the change jar and I can shake it around and it makes a lot of really loud noises and I'm sure my neighbors hate me. <laughs> Weaponized pennies. Listen, they're not, they're not worth a lot, but in a pinch, they really, they really work as a weapon. They're heavy in numbers. Hey, Nickel. <laughs> Some banks have coin counters the second. Oh, they do? It's been a long time since I've gone to a bank. It's been a long time. <laughs> Everything's online now. My grandma used to have those 10 gallon jugs of water, but she would put pennies in them. Oh, I think I got like. I, I got like a cool jar from like an Asian grocery store and I was like, I'm gonna cut a hole in the top and make it my change jar. And that's what I did. It's getting kind of full. Oh, forgot to thank you for the hundred. You smell pennies? Oh. Hopper smells bad, actually. It's not the best smell. You ever like bop your nose and suddenly you can smell like iron and copper? It's not fun. Nicole. <laughs> Pennies are literally not worth the material they're composed of. I've heard something like that. Like, they're not actually worth... What? They're not even worth a penny. They cost more than a penny to make. Bop your nose accidentally all the time. Oh. Gary, I'm sure you have lots of experience with that. <laughs> I've done it a lot, too. Like, while I'm really, really tired. You ever... The worst one... I, so far that I've experienced is when you're looking at your phone while you're sleeping and you're laying on your back and your phone's just in front of your face. You know that as soon as you start to doze off into wonderful dreamland, it's gonna bap you in the nose and you're gonna wake up and it's gonna be awful. What happens? Dad, thank you for the hundred. I got Pokemon Legends. Ooh. Story's kind of hilarious in that they are shocked by this kid who fell from the sky and could throw balls at small animals. Like, just three at once and they think you're a prodigy. Which is why I was disappointed when their heads didn't explode when I caught 80 at once. <laughs> I'll see you cute. Thank you. That is actually pretty funny to think about. <laughs> Welcome in, Rizu. I hope you're doing well. And I hope you've enjoyed the VODs. Also, jeez. I wasn't counting because I was too busy trying to catch up to chat. But thank you for the level 900. <laughs> Alva, thank you for the hundred shinies. You just remove pennies from the system. The small change just isn't worth it, and I'm sure there's better use for copper. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of uses for copper. But also, I like shaking around the jar. It makes a lot of noise. <laughs> also fun to pick them up. You ever just, like, pour a bunch of pennies onto your table and just, like, spread them around with your hands? It is very, very fun and satisfying. Same feeling as when you do that with dice. So. Will you play Pokemon? Probably not. I might in my own time, uh, but not not planning on it so far. Try to be the next Kevin McAllister. <laughs> nah, Kevin McAllister is way smarter than me. Ooh. Can't wait for this to be on YouTube. It's late and I work early, so I can't stick around. But the idea of gobby art teaching time makes me excited. Thank you, Doppler Effect. Yeah, this will be on my VOD channel, um, as will pretty much all of my VODs. Um, but this one might be very helpful because it's going to go over basically how to draw if you've never drawn before or like you are very much a beginner. Do you have a rival? Why can't it be me? 
Why can't I be my own worst enemy? <laughs> tonight, we'll, I'll listen to you while I draw. Drawing, buddy? <gasps> yes. Only if you want, just for tonight. Mods get jealous. Oh. So we can both be drawing in the same space? On the internet? <laughs> I also designed D&D maps and toss a coin in the bottom map. Yeah, you can do that with like macaroni too. It's really fun. Aline, thank you for the raid. Welcome raiders. I hope you're doing well. How was your stream? Gotta go imagine? All right, take it easy. I'll see you in a bit. Hey, you're learning to draw. Nice. Ooh. Hopefully this will help. I really, really do hope this will help. Um, what are mods getting jealous? Nothing, 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 guy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, there's nothing to be jealous of. No. <laughs> Get a fun play playing with dragons? Oh, you're doing Warcraft. I've never played. It sounds. But yeah, so today I really want us to go over um, just how to start drawing if you're not sure where to start. And a lot of it is mental tricks, um, as well as like drawing techniques and exercises. But a lot of it will, is like, you gotta, you gotta play a game with yourself kind of when you do it. And I'll, I'll kind of explain it a bit later. Without as much as I would love to draw, coloring is where it's at. Coloring is really fun. It is also difficult because color palettes are hard to understand. I won't be going over those today because not only is that a lot of information all at once, I also am not great at coloring. I might not be the best person to consult for that. My, my color palettes are very like monochromatic or, tr or tri-colored if I can help it. Those are, those are really the palettes I stick with because my brain can't handle anymore. Oh no. I'm currently a student of online college for graphic design. And I'm loving your streams. Keep up the good work. And by the way, you're reading this, you acknowledge you are cute. They get you in the fine print. That's where they get you. Song went? Pretty much now, actually. Thank you for the reminder, Keiko. I'm just making sure I didn't miss any other redeems, because I think that should be it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm not going to sing a Christmas song, and it's not December yet, but I do want to sing this song. It's called Once Upon a December. It's a very good one. It's not a Christmas song. It's a movie song. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're not getting into the Christmas songs yet. Not, not yet. Monochromatic is elegant. Monochromatic is real good. Yes. All right. I'm going to take a sip real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Using Mariah Carey, I will crash the stream with no survivors. I would expect nothing less of my mods. <laughs> All right. Dancing bears, painted wings, things I almost remember, and a song someone sings once upon a December. Someone holds me safe and warm. Horses prance through a silver storm. Figures dancing gracefully across my memory. <clears throat> Excuse me. Someone holds me safe and warm. Horses prance through a silver storm. Figures dancing gracefully 
across my memory far away long ago glowing dim as an ember things my heart used to know things it yearns to remember and a song <laughs> Thank you for putting up with that. It's not quite a Christmas song, but it's close. Alrighty. Thank you for the posture check, Zap. Hm? Ooh, alrighty. I know the song by heart. Anastasia's a good movie. It's, it's not perfect, but I love it. I love it a lot. Just getting the playlist going. I don't think you want to listen to the same song over and over. We're going to listen to a lot of songs all at once. Now, is this going to be too loud? There we go. Excellent. I thought it messed up for a sec. <laughs> Not a Christmas song. For now. <laughs> oh, Dr. Thalium. Actually, the, the villain songs are always some of the best. I have yet to, to listen to a very disappointing villain song, quite honestly. Alrighty. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> Give us back snack, you gob. Oh. What if I don't want to? What if I want to leave him in his own room where he can just play his Nintendo? <laughs> Besides, we gotta learn today. It's time to learn how to draw from scratch. Off we go to the art screen. This is from last lesson, excuse me. This is from last time. <laughs> there we are. Also, Wilson, thank you for the hydrate. And Crocane, thank you for the breathe redeem. Are we learning not safe work stuff? Actually, no. We are learning very, very basic stuff. So it is very safe for work art. Don't worry. Your, your little, little innocent eyes will not be blinded by this. I am also going to scooch over slightly. There we go. That's better. Mm -hmm. Turn my chicken scratches into art. Pretty much. So I'm going to start with a couple warm-up drawings. Because this is actually a really good thing to do. We're going to start with some warm-up drawings, which is literally just squiggles, getting your arm moving around, drawing up the full screen if you can. Ignore that. My screen has some sensitivity issue. Not many, but just a couple sections. Is Spotify art challenge something you would do? I don't even know what a Spotify art challenge is. I don't have a Spotify. <laughs> I, li I just listened to Honestly, YouTube, <laughs> because I have Opera GX, and so it, it gets rid of most of the ads. I've been drawing forever, but I always forget to warm up. It's hard to remember, yeah. You forget about it quite, quite often. Like, I forget about it lots of it. It is very good for you, though. Draw circles, just as many as you like. Mm -hmm. You can just undo them, whatever. You don't have to leave them. You don't have to 
do anything. Do some diagonal scratches. Do some ups and downs. The other way too. Down to ups. Verticals. Or sorry, horizontals. Both ways. You want to just get the arm moving as much as possible. So this helps to warm up the muscles, but also ho helps you to make sure you're using your full arm. Hi, Blue Kirby. No Megadren, thank you for the resub. Happy 13 months. Honey, the Twitch Goblin is one year and one month old. I love being a truck. Alrich, thank you for the resub. Happy six months. Glad for every minute of it. Thank you. I'm very glad you enjoy hanging out here. Does it have sensitivity issues which lead it to cry in mo inappropriate moments? Yes, it does that occasionally. But I still love it anyways. Neko, first tip to start drawing. Make sure you're about to draw and not sleeping or eating. Yes. Side note, make sure you don't have any food around your desk because you will probably knock it over by accident onto your computer. And that would really suck. <laughs> I've had it happen. <clears throat> Problem is forgetting it's being too lazy and impatient. Yep, I've definitely had that. So we're gonna go over, I'm gonna make a list of things we're gonna go over today. We're gonna go over. Uh, eyes, body, head, and I go over this. Yeah, gesture. But before that, we're gonna start from zero. So this is kind of so today was based on the fact that like I've done a lot of art streams, and people have a lot of really nice compliments whenever they I like they jump in. They're like, "Hey, I really like your art," and I'm like, "Oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you to say." What kind of drawing tablet to use? Wacom 22 inch, bro. Or no, Wacom 22 inch. Uh, it's really old though. It's a second hand. But it's... some. Quite often I would actually get the comment, you draw really, really well. I can only draw stick figures. And it happens so frequently that I went, okay, I'll show you why that's good. I'll show you why drawing with stick figures is actually really, really good. It is a great place to start. So I'm gonna show y'all why starting with stick figures is actually a couple steps ahead of how I learned how to draw. So starting from zero, I'm gonna show y'all how I started to draw. I was probably four or five when I started to draw. And the way I remember drawing was I saw something and I liked it. So whenever you start drawing, Usually when you're a kid, they will make you draw things. Just art, it's good for your brain. Here it happens so much, yeah. We're getting to warm up. I think that's what we're talking about. Um, oh yeah, with, with people saying, oh, I can only draw stick figures, it happens a lot. And I wanna show y'all why that's actually really good. That's really, really good. So when I was a kid, I remember I drew a fish. That was the first drawing I drew in a sketchbook that my parents got me. So it was like, it was just like a goldfish. It was like this. I started by drawing the outline like this. I gave it like the, the, called the rainbow fish scales. I gave it like this kind of eye. Just drew like this. This is actually not too far off of what it looked like. It looked like this. That is actually really impressive for a kid. I'm proud of myself for doing that. However, I started with the outlines. That is what a lot of people do when they start drawing. They focus a lot on the outline and not the bones underneath. So that is why drawing stick figures is excellent. It is a really, really great place to start. It means that you're already thinking about gesture and bones, things that we're gonna be going over today. But yeah, I drew a fish when I was a kid. The other things I drew, sorry, I forgot to mention this. The other things I drew was uh, boxes like this. I drew cubes multiple cubes i drew so many boxes they weren't even all boxes sometimes they were just squares and i would, would put little ribbons on them and do this and i would draw birthday cards for all my cousins i would just do this constantly because you know my family's really big i would have a birthday about every 
month for a while. And so I would just constantly draw presents. The other thing I would draw were balloons. They were literally just like this, except it took me way longer to draw them than this. I would just draw balloons over and over and over again. And that's what I did for five years. <laughs> I drew it so much. It was great, actually. I learned so much. Like, I got so much muscle memory just from drawing these. These are good places to start. If I fill this class, I'm going into politics. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it over there. I love the super robot monkey hyperforce go. I don't know what that is. I didn't watch TV much as a kid. The, ah, I can do perspective now shapes. Yeah, exactly. The, the giving your brain sort of a weird concept of perspective without realizing it. Loco Deus, thank you for the prime. Welcome in. And Alpha Rabbit, thank you for the hundred shinies. Meeting basic motions are a foundation of good coordination. Mr. Miyagi's lesson. Yes. Or Miyagi's. Yes. It was... So it is actually... The thing that helped me with this is literally I was just doing the same motions over and over until I became comfortable with them. And my body would remember how to do it before my brain even really needed to think super hard about it. Exile, I did not get the joke. I did not, sorry. <laughs> Omega Dren, thank you for the resub. Happy 13 months. I need the Twitch gobbling. <laughs> one year and one month old. I think I read that already, but thank you very much either way. Drawing is basically muscle memory. Yeah, it's a lot of muscle memory, but it is also a lot of understanding how to move things in a 3D space in your brain or just being able to do it on paper. But yeah, these, this is what got us all started. This is how it all began. Oh, little honey making her journey, making her way. So the things that these have in common is they don't have any bones. However, the shapes I use here are really, really good to build a foundation of bones for your drawings. So a lot of the times I see people start drawing, and again, this is not bad. This is absolutely a valid way of learning. Uh, but if you feel like you're stuck after drawing for a while, then this might apply. So I'm gonna draw a face. How some people start drawing the faces is they start like this, drawing the outlines. And just drawing the main lines that they remember, you know, from the outside in. I'm just drawing generic anime person. This is kind of what my art used to look like before I started learning bo to put bones underneath it. Just knowing th how things work. Yeah, just knowing how things work can really help you with your art. Let's do it. Bones. But yeah, this is kind of what my old art used to look like. Like, way back when I was like 11, 12-ish. Which, not bad, honestly. You can, you can see where the foundations can be applied here. So people, a lot of the time, start with just drawing the final lines without really understanding that there's a bunch of rough stages before they get to the cleanup. Thank you, Panther. Back when honey preferred art boneless. Ugh. Oh, before I could really chew on it. The good old how to draw anime drawing books. Yes, I, I read those a lot. And they actually really, really helped. Oops. So this is kind of what boneless art can look like. It's not bad. It is, it, the foundations can be applied here. So I'm gonna go and show y'all why stick figures are great. So normally stick figures, you draw like this, right? You have the head, you have the hands, you have the legs, and maybe you have a face. That is really good. Why that is really good is because you've already got an understanding of just the basic bones. What we're going to do is going to essentially plus up a stick figure. And you'll be able to see how you can apply this to all your drawings, how I apply it to my drawings. I need to create a new layer. 
So we are going to add anatomy to a stick figure. So we're going to start with a circle for head. This is totally like I would still stick with this. Still got the face. Got the spine. But instead of drawing the arms connecting at the body, we're going to draw shoulders. We're going to draw hips. We go from this to this. The only difference is that we're adding a couple extra lines. And now you basically have the bones of a character. It is really, really good. Absolutely, Zushi. This, this song goes real hard. What is this one again? This is, I think, Quasar by Maxed. It's so good. It was about Austrian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Old joke. I'm self taught, but going back to basic can hurt. Absolutely, yeah. Going back to basics is not a bad thing. I do it a lot of the times just so I can get refreshers. So, if you're drawing stick figures like this, keep it up. Keep doing it. Stick figures are great. But if you want to start adding bones but don't have a grasp on anatomy quite yet, literally just add shoulders and hips. It can help a whole lot. It might look a bit different. You, it might take some adjusting in your mind. But this is great. Because after... I'm actually going to merge these layers. No, I want to merge them. Please. Studio. What? There we go. I'm going to flip these because left to right is how my brain likes it. So from here, we're going to go to the next stage of how you can add more anatomy to your stick figures. So still going to keep the simple head. And we still got the shoulders. But now, instead of just keeping the torso straight, or just, just like one line, we're going to add a box. Same thing for the hips. Also going to add a box. Legs will connect down here. If you want to, this is where things can start to get a little bit more anatomically complex. You can start adding the muscles here. You can start adding the torso part. Same thing here. You can add the hips. I'm drawing a little quickly, so the proportions are a little different than how I usually draw them. But you kind of get the idea, right? You've gone from stick figure to complex stick figure. Oops. Let's see. I'm going to reconnect this. E. Bridger, please. You were working fine. I fixed you. And now we're back at it. Excuse me one moment. There we go. I was having technical difficulties and you snuck up on me. Lifeless Phoenix. Thank you for the 20 gifted subs. So much. So we're going from stick figure to thick figure? Ayo. We are, though. But jeez. Phoenix, thank you for the 20 gifted subs. You did not have to do that. That is a whole lot. Ooh. Really, you are the art teacher my high school counselor robbed me of. I curse his family line to be hunted by a Jeez. Aw. Art should be for everybody. But yeah, so you can kind of, you can very much see how it can be applied this way. It's just adding a couple more things. Again, I would definitely start with this. Like, if, you, if you're starting from here, just go right over to this one. It is a very good place to start. After you get comfortable with this, you can, you can push this a little more. So let's do a couple poses to show you how... This, this middle one can be used for pretty much everything. <laughs> Lifeless always, always support content that makes me happy. I'm glad that my streams make you happy. Thank you. 
much though, I was more into scen drawing scenery. So this probably wasn't wasn't good at drawing people. That's totally fair. Drawing scenery, something completely different. I can I, I can't even explain why I, I could how to do it. <laughs> that was a sentence. I'm not a background artist. I'm not great at that. Let's do a simple reaching for a book pose. Looks more like dancing, but my brain said reach for a book. So it starts as a stick figure here. We're gonna push it. The next level stick figure, the one with shoulders. Still got the spine. There we go. And you can kind of see how that can be applied to add more anatomy. Hi, Water Shark. And hey, Phantom, how's it going? Let's see. Holders and the cube of a rib cage. Binging blue lock and instantly clicked on the stream name. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted to watch blue lock, but I don't know if I should. I've got so much to do already. Let's see. And we got muscles for the legs. Hips. So yeah, you can see how these translate into each other. That's how you can start drawing gestures. I realized that I said we would start with eyes first. Um, we definitely skipped right to bodies. I will do eyes later. I figured that it, this was more relevant in this direction. But yeah, any questions, class? Those hips don't lie. No, they do not. They got good perspective. Will this be on the test? No, but it'll be in your homework. Exile, cool it with the Hitler jokes. How do I draw a line? So drawing a line is very difficult because it does take a lot of muscle memory. I'm trying to think of like explaining a how I draw lines. Hmm. Yeah, it's difficult because a lot of it comes from muscle memory. I can't even- I can barely draw straight lines consistently. It is very, very difficult. Like, I don't- I guess just make sure to remember to use, like, your wrist as well as your elbow and, and shoulder. Because that way you practice stabilizing with your, like, actual upper body instead of just with your wrist. Because if you do it with your wrist- excuse me. They're not- you only get a limited amount of motion. It's not very straight. If you draw with your full arm, you can get a lot more straight lines. Also, adjust the canvas to make sure it's it's big enough or small enough for you to do that. I do technical drawings so straight lines come fine. Yeah, you can also use a ruler. There's nothing wrong with using tools available to you. How do I draw different textures of hair? I will cover that. I don't even know if I'll cover that, but it will not be in this lesson because we're just we're just starting with basics. What I would recommend is looking up tutorials that are on YouTube for like how some artists draw hair. Like find an artist you like, see if they have any breakdowns. Because there's a lot of tutorials online if you literally just put it into your search bar, how to color hair, how to texture hair, how to draw this type of lighting on this hair. The internet is a wonderful resource. I cannot cover absolutely everything because there's just so much information and I am only privy to like a tiny corner of it. I would love to know way more, but it's very difficult. I have a question. Why are you so cute? Uh, on topic question, please. You can focus on the lesson. Also, Cam, thank you for the resub. He's 17 months. Oh my gosh. Honey, I had the evil tech. Also the cute. Accept the compliments now. Do it. I'm 
important question. Is it? Is it? You're trying to focus, but teach is adorable. Then you should be able to focus more. You should be focusing more. I struggle with practice because of how perfectionist I am. Do you know any ways to go through these practice steps without constantly erasing and starting over due to mental nonsense? Even with basic practice, if I can't do it exactly as teacher did, I get frustrated. So Sulingard, there, there's a couple techniques you could try for that. Um, one I would really recommend, because it, it it's mentally tough, but it's actually very, very good. Because you have to face yourself. <laughs> Look, looking in a mirror. The technique is to get pen and paper. Pen, specifically, not pencil. If you use pen that you cannot erase, you will be forced to confront what you draw, and you can see where all your habits are. That is one of the, the pros of doing uh, physical drawing on sketchbooks and paper before transitioning to digital. Because if you transit, if you start with digital, you're going to have a bit of a harder time with line art as well as with cleanup, because you'll be able to control Z so often. Like erasing is not a problem. However, if you are on paper and with tools that you cannot erase, you you have to commit. You will just have to see where your mistakes are and do better next time. It is very scary. Do all my sketches in pen, I love it. it forces me, to exactly dishonest. It, it, it forces you to commit. I wouldn't like draw a big masterpiece in pen if you have an idea in mind, but just for sketching randomly or for doing warm-ups or like little gestures or even just doodles, like, I draw a lot of like weird spirals with or Mandela designs in pen so that my brain can get used to making the right choices and movements and thinking a little bit, but not too much before I commit with a pen. Echo, let's say I'm trying to achieve a certain type of anatomy that requires the line to be a certain way. How can you be so, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. Ooh. I use pen because I'm too lazy to buy pencils and I have hundreds of pens. Exactly. Like, again, uh, one of the cool things about physical mediums is just use what's available to you. If you have a lot of pens and you have a lot of paper, perfect. I used to, um, I used to go grab some, like, temporary tattoos and, and just, like, put them onto my arm because I really liked it. It forced me to commit, but also, like, I got to think a lot about the designs. But I couldn't erase any of them. So it was a it was a neat way to learn. Here's something. How do you know? How do you go about connections like wrist, elbows, and kneecaps? Those are kind of rough for me. Those are very difficult, I will say. Anatomy is rough. I would just re uh, recommend looking at. So what can help you to study joints in particular? Uh, I probably won't go over it in too much detail today, but just because we are gonna we're covering very basic stuff for today. But I would recommend looking at medical textbooks. Because or or um, sculpting anatomy, because sculptors have to know how joints support weight in order for the actual statue to support weight, but look natural at the same time. So you have to study how the muscles connect to the knee, how the knee can move, what happens when you bend the knee, and when when your muscles tense up. You can get a better grasp of these if you study. If, if there are like any, you know, 3D models, I don't think there's any 3D models that can do that currently. However, you can look at medical textbooks to see those. And a lot of the times what's really cool is they're color coordinated. So you can really break down how they move. I trauma from shitty training course, but your stream is really healing. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Astroma, thank you for the hydrate. Excuse me. Also, Alpha, thank you. I had the same issue early on. Getting over my overly high expectations of myself made getting anything done. My solution was simply accepting that satisfactory results would come in time and make do with what I make. Sure enough, I got better each time. After this, I will go over mental tricks for getting back into art because that's probably the biggest thing that you are going to struggle with if you're getting into art now, like as a teenager or an adult. Gotta go to bed? I'll have to watch the rest later. You can remember, chat? You don't need two kidneys. Yep. Good night, death. You get some rest. I will see you soon. Thinking about getting a Celtic symbol tattoo? Oh, design. 
I'm just trying to make sure that if there's uh, just want to make sure I didn't miss any important question. Would you ever do a stream for extreme angle of far point view anatomy? Like for muscle study anatomy? That could be a good thing to learn, actually. Like a good thing to go over on how to break it down and simplify it for art. Because I am not great at super hyper realistic drawings. I'm much better at simplifying shapes and implementing them into like fantasy designs <laughs> or more simplified designs, I should say. There's the book Atlas of Human Anatomy. Oh yeah, that's a good one. The Atlas, uh, I forget who it's by, but the Atlas of Human Anatomy is a really good one. It was at our library and we could look at that a lot. I think I have a good grasp of anatomy. When I draw bodies, it doesn't feel organic. Ah, so uh, Zealot, what you might actually have is, so that's, it's good if you have a good grasp on anatomy. That means you're on your way to having a good grasp on gesture. Sometimes when you draw the anatomy way too accurately, you lose a lot of the life. Your line art becomes stiff and, and very structured, but it needs to be smoother because although the muscles are very, very rigid and they, they are stiff, the skin on top of it uh, creates a smoother, more elastic -y gesture because, and that can be confusing because it's soft on the outside, but hard on the inside when it comes to drawing people. It's tricky because you need both. You need a balance. So you do have the hardest part down, which is the anatomy. Now it's just a matter of practicing and simplifying until you can get the smooth lines and the smooth gestures that you like. Any advice for making digital drawings, illustrations without motor skills? Brain injury makes body move not good. Okay. I would recommend... Hmm. No motor skills. Okay, so this, of course, will depend on your situation. Um, the only solutions I can think of currently, I have not gone through this. I don't know any friends who have gone through something quite the same. I have friends who had had tar carpal tunnel and have had to relearn on their opposite arms. I would recommend trying to switch up your arms, your drawing hand, uh, make sure you're stretching. But it is a time thing, regaining motor skills. Because let's see. Yeah, if you have a physiotherapist that you're working with or a doctor, Bring that up to them, tell them you want to do small precise movements for art, or specifically in your hands, and you can see what sort of options you have. If you don't have a doctor or a physiotherapist, look online. Try to find a forum where people, to ask people who have gone through injuries and have had to make do with like lower motor functions or have had to regain it, because uh, they might have more helpful advice than I have. Really just struggling with work-related burnout? Take it easy. Don't push it. Don't force anything. Relax. Rest. Mighty Duke, thank you for the posture check. Oh. 3D models for anatomy is digital or physical? Because I do know a 3D digital model that was recently released specifically for a ton of anatomy and reference stuff. I know the art gun is working on one. It's not currently out, so I can't really use it. But uh, 3D models for digital. Uh, you can use physical ones. There are physical ones. They're very expensive, but they do help. Yeah, thank you for the breathe reading. Y'all have so many good questions. I don't want to miss any any of them, so I apologize. <laughs> One sec. I'm just gonna really quickly leave this up here. <laughs> Boy. Whew, excuse me. All right. Uh, I have an issue with my art feeling flat. That does come with time. I would recommend looking at spherical shading exercises. So if you feel like your art is looking flat, it's the most annoying thing because it's the most simple drawing to exercise, but it's literally just learning how to shade a sphere. Depending on what style you want, it can really make your art pop. So adding shading and lighting can help to add volume and depth. Uh, if your art feels flat just because it is just line art, that happens. Don't worry about it. That is a time thing, unfortunately, so you just have to keep at it. Uh, Atlas of Human Anatomy, Frank Etchnitter. I'm not sure what their name is, but like I remember reading a book called Atlas of Human Anatomy. It's really good. I'm just, I'm just skimming through the questions real quick. 
Love to hear those mental tricks. I stopped drawing for over half a year back at work. My own mental got in the way of me actually improving my art. I really want to get back into drawing. Ooh, yes, I will go over that. Um, after I do Q&As, I will go over how to mentally make sure you start drawing and pick up drawing. Again, this is just in my experience. I will be able to help a little bit more. Stop it going around where you're lifting your index helps. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that before, where, where instead of drawing with your... Uh, Index finger, you switch it out for your middle finger and just point your index. I've heard it's really good. You're going uh, over heads soon, but will that include faces? It will include faces, yes. I'll be focusing specifically on eyes um, and heads, but I can also add in noses and mouths as well into the tutorial. Tend to work through burnout via sheer spite. Some people can do that. However, be careful because sometimes Working through burnout with sheer spite messes you up for much longer. So do know your limits. Don't ever feel bad for taking breaks. Sometimes you need it. That just happens. What are we drawing tonight? Art tutorial, just generally starting from scratch. Ever seen Scott Seva, traditional artist on YouTube? I have not, no. Oh gosh, there's so, so many good questions. Uh. How long do you practice? Because I'm trying to do like gesture training for an old book, three hour blocks of training. That's really good. So what I did for my art school was it was three hours. No, it was actually oh, nine to 12 hours of life drawing. This was recommended. Usually we did nine. Recommended for getting good at anatomy and gesture was 12 hours per week. Um, that could take up a lot of your time. And I don't know if everyone can do that. I certainly don't do it now that I'm out of school. I should, because after three weeks of not doing it, I was already rusty. It happens. It's fun to get back into it. For practice, do when you feel like it. Do it whenever inspiration hits you. Just make sure you have some piece of paper next to you so you can draw it, or at least write down the idea. I always walk around with a sketchbook. Doesn't matter. I, I always got to have some paper and pen on me. Any artist will also have that. I have I have not met an artist that doesn't walk around with some form of pen and paper. So the hobo, thank you for the resub. Happy anniversary. Welcome in. So you're saying I should focus on drawing shaded booba. Yeah, if you want to add more dimension, then yeah, do think about shading it. Because um, that can actually add a lot of depth. Not just for chest, but also for like, shade on the neck, um, shade on the side of the face, you know? Just generally think about how the lighting would hit your piece, and that's how you can add shading. I trouble paying attention to free lectures and long-form videos to learn drawing. Do you think it's best if I just learn on my own, or try to find a format that helps me learn? So actually, Lord Brown Bear, I cannot focus during streams. Like when I watch other people's streams, it's really unfortunate because I love watching my friends stream, but sometimes my brain just clocks out. It also happens <laughs> for YouTube videos. Anything longer than seven minutes, my brain will tune it out. That is, that is actually one of the hurdles I had to get over when it came to learning live 2D techniques. I would recommend, this is, my dad actually taught me this trick. Just put the video, put the captions on the video and make it go as fast as possible on YouTube if you can and just read as it goes. That is surprisingly saved me so much headache in trying to find a video that works for me. Or either that or try to find speed, uh, uh, time lapse tutorials. Those are really good for my brain because I can't focus for long periods of time. Speed, time lapse tutorials where people stop and explain what they're doing for like a quick 10 seconds and then continue the time lapse helped me so much. It's really, really good. What are your thoughts on don't break the chain exercise for drawing? I don't know what that is. I don't know what the don't break the chain is exercises. Would that apply to a person like me who has joint issues the entire life? Uh, I would, yes. My previous advice would be to talk to you medical professional, physiotherapist, um, just tell them that you want to do art. You need muscle for small, precise movements. 
and hopefully they'll be able to help you out or find forums with similar people with similar joint issues and see what their advice is. It can be tricky. Yula, welcome in. I never drew too much, but I really would like to. Do you think everyone has a style they have to find or just some are just not cut out for it? Everyone can draw. Anyone can draw. I will, <laughs> anyone can do art. I don't think there is a person alive that cannot do art in some way, shape or form. I don't think, I think the, the idea that someone is not cut out for art just because they can't monetize it or they're not fast enough or they're not as, as they don't learn as fast as their peers is ridiculous. And I hate that. It's why are you gatekeeping art? A thing that just makes people so happy. Everyone, everyone has a style. However, a style is just your, your habits showcasing through a drawing. So I don't think, so everyone has a style, but it's not quite the way you're thinking of it. At least I don't think, yeah, it's hard to explain. Will there be one section on exposing multiple layers at once? Like if a person wanted to draw a zombie lich, which they are largely rotted away through things and muscles of bone showing. Mm, I won't do that, but I, I, I think you can do that as an artist. Some people just eyeball it for zombie art. It's kind of impressive. Have any tips on getting over perfectionism or getting past the ugly stage of drawing? Yes. After Q&A, which I will take a couple more questions. Uh, I do apologize. I can't read everything. I want to make sure I hit all the questions and then get to the advice part uh, for just mental tricks. Any tips or tricks to color your artwork faster or quicker on a painting software? Uh, draw a line art or use the select tool. Select the, the outline of the character as best as you can. Color fill. And then clipping layer on top. And you can draw whatever you want. I'll put clothes on them, baby. That is my fast way of coloring and adding uh, shading. That's what I do. <laughs> do I like sweet potatoes? Yes, I love sweet potatoes. What if you can't even draw a single straight line? Go chop my smash with it. I can't draw a straight, single straight line. Don't be hard on yourself. Last question, the extreme point of view. Do you have any tips for simplify body structure? Because I have trouble. I always want it detail and it's torture. Uh, just a simplified body structure. Give yourself a time limit. Try to draw a gesture in maybe like 30 seconds or one minute or even like three minutes. It forces your brain to think about the absolute essentials instead of focusing on the details. It's a really, really mean trick because your brain hates it. Your brain thinks, I want these details. I gotta get this in. But you only have a certain amount of time. So you're slowly training your brain to stop focusing on the things that do not are not essential to the piece. It's a weird trick. I do it in life drawing all the time. I don't like it, but it works. <laughs> Best way to draw someone holding a shotgun. Look up reference. Literally just uh, find a stock image, reference that, trace over it, add anatomy, uh, and then draw it again because tracing over it doesn't add all the anatomy. So reference is important bah, 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 bah. How would you determine what lightweight to use for a piece up to you? It is a you, you can always start out light and go heavier uh, It is harder to go opposite unless you were using a digital program All I can say is uh, you will have to judge for that one Which sucks at focusing on stream I get it, and it's very helpful how you break things down with your drawing tips, so I know when to look up to see what I need to. Thank you. I'm glad. Can you pop and lock? Nope. I'm notoriously bad at dancing. Blackwing, thank you for this gifted sub. Thank you very much. Welcome. And Mr. Regner, thank you for the head pats. Sadly, honey, is not an occupational therapist and can't really help much with disability, but there are definitely people who are. Yes. I... I, I don't know... <laughs> enough about actual anatomy and how to help it. I can offer tips for general stuff. Not so much super, super detailed stuff when it comes to mobility issues. I do apologize. Would you recommend starting with the bigger or smarter, smaller drawings? For scale? Uh, 
simple. Not large or small, just start simple. Also, Henry, who's this? Yeah, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the tavern. Hi, yeah, Freedom B. This might be the stream for you. We're starting from scratch. It took a while to find the arts for you, but everyone can. Yes. Uh. There's an eye tracking software that can let you do things with my yellow. True. I haven't tested with that. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Any tips for people who generally starting with clips specifically? Look up tutorials. It sucks. You're just gonna have to look up tutorials. Okay, I think. Oh, are art books worth it anymore? Mm. Yes, I would say yes. Because as nice as it is that there is information online absolutely everywhere, I find that even if I save that information to a folder, it is nowhere near as easy to use for my brain than having a physical book with pages I can flip through. That's just me though. When am I ready to draw silly things like Kermit the Frog dance off with Scrinch? Do it now. <laughs> now is the time. Is the channel on YouTube that posts clips of you or yours? Uh, I only have a VOD channel. I don't have a clips channel. So clips are posted by um, completely different people that I do not actually know. You know, solid free drawing software is someone who is just starting can't spend a lot. I think Krita is free and it, I've heard it's very, very good. Would you recommend going to schools to learn the basics and build a fine resource online? Okay, so that's actually a really good question I will cover. Art school? Expensive. It's very... No, don't get distracted. This is a really important question. Uh, Scuddy Buddy, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs and the 100 shinies. So sorry I can't stay longer. I will have to get going. I've been following you for a while. This is the first time I've made it in a long while. I hope you have a good evening, too. Thank you so much. That's a lot. But I hope you had fun. <laughs> uh, and... Nula, thank you for the prime. Welcome in. I am just going to do that. I remember there was a really important question I was going to answer. Where was it? Where was it? Uh, art school question. Yes, thank you very much. So, for art school, uh, why did I pin that? <laughs> what? <laughs> Unpin this. Uh. Hey guy, can you check mod chat real quick? Uh, but yeah, what was I about to say? Right, art school is very, very expensive. I would highly recommend trying to draw yourself first because <laughs> a lot of the times when you go to art school, you have to submit a portfolio. And usually the portfolio includes anything you think could prove that you could you could pass this course. So some schools will accept you even if they don't think you're ready, because that's how schools work. They, they need to make money. So uh, this happened to a couple friends where they joined the school with very, very little art skills. Like they didn't have they had the basics, but not the fundamentals. And so they really fell behind. They struggled a lot during school and they were just so sad and so rough on themselves because the rest of their peers were doing fine because they had been drawing for a very, very long time. So you have to be really careful about going to art school because not only is it, again, very, very expensive, but it can be like being thrown into a room of people who already know what they're doing versus you who will have to play catch up throughout your entire school. It can be very, very rough. Uh, community art classes and like, uh, are like our nice people just starting out. Yes, community art classes. So going to like a recreation center or even like an after, after school class. That is really, really good. 
they're usually significantly cheaper and you still get the fundamentals down. It is... <laughs> art school's weird because art is somewhat subjective. But I don't think it is a bad choice if you are ready for it. And do you know you're ready for it? Not usually. That's the, that's the tricky part. However, looking online for resources and sort of not comparing your art, but gauging what skill level you're at based on other artists who potentially go through this program might be a good way of seeing if you're ready. Also, Thurival, thank you for the prime. Happy nine months. Welcome back. Also, thank you very much, guy. Son, big art school, very expensive. If you have the means, the experience and the connections are good, especially if you're aiming for a career. But you can learn a lot on the internet for much less, if not free, and, for, and the motivation. Yes, very, very true. It was a painting event in my college, but it was scheduled during another one of my classes. Hopefully they'll do another one. There usually is a lot at a lot of colleges. The biggest thing I heard about that art school in addition to being a school is a networking platform. Yes, it is. It very much is. Art school is one step short of a full out scam. Some very few can be worth it, but you have to go in assuming the worst. Carefully use graduates, proof of the result. Yeah, that is actually a really good thing to do. Look at, like, decide what you want out of the art school. If you want a career, then look at their graduates. Not just the highlights, not just their, like, valedictorians or their, their top of the top. Look at their average people. See what kind of job, art talk to them, reach out, see what kind of job opportunities they have gotten. Um, because that can give you a better gauge of, like, how successful and good this program actually is. Because the people who succeed are usually people who already have the skills. They just needed to refine them a little bit and network. And that's kind of what art school was for them. If you are looking just to get better at art and better your skills, I wouldn't really recommend a really fancy art school. I would still recommend going online, finding tutorials, or taking, uh, like, recreation, like, again, recreation center classes. Also, Tiger Lily. Thank you, I'm glad this is helpful. I just want to make cartoons. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a job. You can definitely do that. Just make sure you, you go into a program that specializes in that. Because if you go to a very general program, like if you, if you go in for physical mediums, that probably won't help you too much to get a job as a cartoon artist. Like, or if you want to become a comic artist, I wouldn't recommend a course that involves sculpting or a course that involves like painting because that doesn't really apply to what you're looking for. You want digital art courses. Argyle, I want to draw girls? Nice. Uh, that you can learn just online. There's a lot of reference, a lot of anatomy classes you can draw from that. Sometimes the big art school teachers have blogs or videos for easy access online. Teachers exist outside the classroom, believe me, I've seen them. Yes, exactly, son. True. Uh, what are the biggest tips in mind when going from traditional to digital art? Have patience. The disconnect between the pen and the Cintiq will make you incredibly frustrated. However, just keep at it. Draw simple things first. Not complex. Start simple. <laughs> Neko, this is something that was discussed before, but the topic changed. No worries. My only real advice, using reference is not bad. Drawing from the mind is difficult. To draw, you have to look. To look, it has to exist. The mind gives you ideas, but they are constantly changing. You need something stable. And the more references, the more to learn from. Remember, learn, don't copy. Yes, absolutely. References are very, very important. Uh, I learned here learning how to draw can make you better sculpture. Yep, definitely. I can see that. The skills are somewhat transferable. Uh, just career-wise, you don't want to pay for money for a course that you're not going to use. Take my digital art in community college. Don't got a job in it, but avoided. I learned new stuff from it, which I wish to use later. My art is blocked. Yeah, it happens. Good night, Lauren Brown Bear. Take it easy. You got this. I will be going over... Uh, Okay, last question, Merlin Cross. One other question, there's so much information, discussion, videos, courses, etc. How do you figure out where to start or what might work for you without getting overwhelmed? That's a hard one. Ooh, that is a very hard one. 
I think there is a bit of an overload of information. There is a lot to learn from, and that is kind of great. It means you, you can draw from a lot of different sources. However, it can be overwhelming. So weirdly enough, I recommend being off the internet. <laughs> Go to your library <laughs> because the information isn't jumping out at you the same way it is online. When you look online, you will start looking at tutorial videos, for example, on YouTube, and you'll look at them and you will find one video you like, and then it'll lead you to another one. And then sometimes what'll be in the next video contradicts what the previous one said, but their art looks good. So sometimes just going to a library, picking up a how to draw manga book, and then reading it for a bit is actually the best solution. <laughs> it, it, it simplifies it a lot. Because what some people do with their tutorial videos is they go too complex too quickly. They try to learn how to render hair when they should be actually learning anatomy of the head to place the hair properly. Some people think too much about how to um, add sparkle effects and add lighting and depth to an iris when instead they should be focusing on eye placement and anatomy and how a, an eyeball fits into the skull. You know? Some people think of rendering before anatomy. And anatomy is really the bones and what holds the drawing together. Mr. Mean, thank you for the hydrate. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Also, Tiger Lily, thank you for the Risa. Happy four months. Thank you so much for the advice. Listening to you talk about this is really helpful. Thank you for doing this. Sorry for the double message. I thought the message was attached to this. <laughs> no worries. It's all good. Okay, that's enough questions for now. Apologize. Uh, I do want to get to the point of like, um, this is a really difficult point that I think is really important to stress. Is how to brain. I definitely didn't spell, spell brain barren. That didn't just happen. So, wrong color. Brain tricks. We need these. Son, question, why are you so cool? No, you. No, you, son. There's a lot of areas to study. Pick one you'd like to strengthen and see if it's what you want to learn. If not, pick something else. No need to learn everything to start. Yes, very much. Thank you for the clarification. We wanted to go in Barnes and Noble and have some books and wanted to make sure it was a good idea. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, especially if it's within your budget. Within your budget. Also, libraries. Those are things. I get too overwhelmed by like 15 videos that argue about how to do things or not. Yeah, no. If anyone says your art will be ruined if you do this one thing, no, that <laughs> they're a little elitist. Art is not something you can just wreck by making one mistake. Like, I don't know about physical mediums, but digital art, no, you can adjust things. I also fear that I may have missed the entire stream if I didn't look at Twitter. I wish I didn't get distracted by Fortnite. That's okay, have fun playing Fortnite. Was telling me to go let your library card. Yeah, it's it's so much cheaper than buying a shit like a whole bunch of books. Books are great. I have a little library of art books for myself. But yeah, so brain tricks. Our brains are wild, <laughs> especially if you have ADD, ADHD, any sort of neuroty neurotypical parts of your brain that might interfere with your focus as well as your motivation. <laughs> so. I'm gonna share the tips that work the best for me. They may not work the best for you. However, these are the most common things I've noticed among myself and my artist friends. A small cat, thank you for the reset. Happy two months. And Zap, thank you for the posture check. Boom, excuse me. ADHD pre gay. <laughs> D brain gang. I have not got diagnosed, but oh boy, do I share some symptoms. So, brain tricks. I've said this before, but paper and pen specifically. Pencil is fine. However, paper and pen works really, really well. The reason why is because pen forces you to commit. You cannot erase it. It forces your brain to continue what you're drawing or create something entirely new. Catching pen is so much fun. It's so much fun. Don't 
be afraid of wasting papers or, or pages. So a lot of the times what happens is when you get a fresh new sketchbook, you think really hard, like what's gonna be the drawing to christen it? What am I gonna do with it? I literally just write my name and put some stickers in it so that I'm like, first page done. <laughs> it has been christened. Don't be afraid to draw nonsense because it's not nonsense. You are literally creating muscle memory. Even if you don't feel like you are and you feel like you're just doing scribbles all over, you are still creating muscle memory. Even if it's not perfect, your brain is thinking about moving things without you realizing it. Hmm. Excuse me. Burrito coming back up. <laughs> so a new sketchbook ritual. Skip the first page. That is a good one too. I do that as well. Yeah. Chaos with purpose. Yay. Even if you're consciously don't understand what's going on when you're scribbling, your brain knows. Your muscles know. Any tips for getting over the fear of wasting a good drawing by added a ben bad pen mark on it? I know when I make something I'm kind of proud of, I get absolutely terrified. Take a picture of it. Just take a picture of the art you like before you start lining it. Make sure it's a good picture too, because that way, even if you mess up the line art, you still have the base. You can reprint, you can send that to yourself, reprint it out, try again. You can even put it in, into a digital program, draw the line art there. Just do take a picture of it. Uh, that's another one, here we go. Dollar store sketchbooks are great. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Thank you, guy. Yeah, I'm getting a little distracted. Uh, so paper pen, waste pages. Those are two really big ones for motivation. Because sometimes the fear comes from, I need to make this perfect. Like sometimes you look at people's sketchbooks when they do sketchbook flips and go, wow, everything's wonderful and full. There's so much used space. There's no empty space. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. They've been doing this for so much longer than any of us have. Don't put those kind of that kind of pressure on yourself. Eyeballs and hands are always my first page. That's a fun drawing. I like drawing eyes too. How to combat over detailing. It's hard. This is another brain trick. Actually, I'll just put it like this. Time limits. You know how some people are like, oh yeah, do this much practice? No. Sometimes you need to do the opposite. Yeah, for a certain, you need 10,000 hours of doing anything to get good at something. Yeah. However, it has to be a little bit meaningful. It can't just be drawing the same thing over and over. You will get better at that. But... <laughs> It will be very tedious, and sometimes you will lose motivation that way. So time limits. Let's do one minute. Five minutes. One hour. So for drawing, one minute. It's for gestures. The really fast getting the basics down. Absolutely no extra details. You are just practicing anatomy. That is what gestures is for. So you limit yourself to maybe one minute. For five minute drawings, uh, probably rough. A rough drawing. That's what you can probably get out in about one minute. In an hour, detail work. You can do as much detail work as you want. Um, and even then, if you're feeling in a good mood, you can keep going after one hour. Just go on as long as you'd like the piece, you know? But this is a way to... <laughs> My brain loves this trick, despite the fact that I don't do it often enough, because it fills my sketchbook. When I do this, one minute drawings, I have to draw so many of them. I do like 20 of these. So it usually takes me 30 minutes. Sometimes your brain has to think. But what it does is it forces your brain to stop thinking too much. Because sometimes your brain goes, I want to make this 
the best piece. And when you're like, no, 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 I just need to draw to start. So it fills your sketchbook really, really well. And it also makes your brain think it's accomplished a lot, you know, because you have. So it's a really good way to feel like you've done a lot and you've improved a lot, even if it's only taken a half hour. Yeah, somebody has one of those perfect sketchbooks where everything is great. Ask see the other 500 they did before it. Yeah, it's because they've done so many. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having that kind of filled sketchbook. I have lots of friends who actually draw like that. They love to just fill every single little space with either writing or, or drawings. And it's so much fun to look at. However, it's not a realistic expectation if you are starting. My sketchbook doesn't even have completely filled spaces. It has a lot, it maybe has three characters on one page with lots of empty space in between them. And then I drop it and go to the next page. Also nothing wrong with that. So gestures don't have to be something pretty or cool. It can be nonsense shapes, perfect circles. Yeah, gestures can be like anything. You can kind of consider them warm-ups in a way, not just for your muscles, but for your brain. Use Phantom, I have to leave for the night. All right, get some rest. Good night. Lots of imperfect drawings is how you iterate quickly too. If you fail at something, do it fast, you learn from it. Yes. I got to move these because there's more advice and I have run out of space. So, so far, paper and pen forces you to commit. Waste pages is not a thing. Like, you can't waste pages. You're using them. You are learning from something. Hey, long cool. Jing Crusade, fail faster. Yes, that is probably the best way to describe this. Fail faster, but smarter. What does this mean? It is hard to explain this one because it is a frustrating one. So to feel like you have progression, you want to do really good big pieces. At least I'd feel like I do. I want to do big complex pieces that look great and detailed. That's not how that works. Learning is about doing something wrong the first couple times and then learning and trying to get some help from that. So tutorials or reference and then moving forward. So you want to try yourself. Again, this is not for everyone. Try. Try yourself. Reference. Progress. So you don't just want to fail faster because failing faster, that's really easy to do. You just have to do something quickly and rushed and not think about it. But this kind of forces you to think about why a piece may or may not work, you know? So think about it. Use that big old brain of yours. I'll add some wrinkles because we all got a little bit of wrinkles on our brains. And then progress, you know? So don't just fail. Think about why a piece failed and learn from it. Fancy soups, thank you for the thousand. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, Thank you to Favorite Gob for all this valuable information. No worries. I am very, very glad that this is helpful. I do hope that people are learning something from it, or at least seeing how I think of it. I'm gonna make this smaller again. <laughs> I'll start the new notes over here. For motivation. This one's tricky. My brain is smooth and cute, no wrinkles. Ah, oh, like a chicken breast. <laughs> All right, let's see, but... Real folks, was you, you see to failing quickly? Nice, all you gotta do is learn from those failures. It's not enough just to fail. I have learned that too. It's not enough just to fail fast. You have to learn from those failures. That's where the growth comes in. Uh, right, motivation. Motivation's hard because it comes from absolutely anywhere and nowhere at the same time. So you have to find what motivates you. Now, how do you find your motivation? That is so hard to do. Thoroughblade, catch you later. 
The way I find motivation is by not drawing sometimes. <laughs> because sometimes when I lack motivation, it's because my brain has wrapped itself up too tightly and expects a really, really detailed, complex piece out in a short amount of time. That is not a reasonable ask, but my brain still asks of it. So sometimes, I don't know what I want to create, but my brain knows I want to create something. So I will leave my art station, not draw for like a couple hours, and do something not related to drawing, and just gently think of it. <laughs> the best the best way of describing it is, I, I this is a quote that like I, I listened to in Golden Compass, like the movie, when I was a kid. And it really stuck with me because it's, you're not supposed to grasp at motivation. You're not supposed to grab it. You're not supposed to reach out and seek it and try to hold on to it forever. You have to kind of hold it gently and understand that it will change and it will, it will kind of not always be what you want it to be. And you kind of got to just gently hold it and accept it. It is rough. <laughs> Sharp and Matter, thank you for the breathe and ear wiggles. <laughs> it sounds like mental probing while given an alternative stimulus. Yeah, kind of like that. Just... <laughs> yeah, give it something else to think about, and then it will sort of loosen its grip on what it wants to do the point where your motivation or your idea can breathe a little bit and actually form itself. They hold it now firmly grasp. <laughs> this is the hardest part for me. I haven't drawn in years unless it was for class. So here's something, um, this is kind of related to motivation, but it's kind of related to burnout, which kind of sounds like what you may be going through. Maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, So finding motivation versus killing burnout. These are two different things, but they a lot of the advice can be applied very similarly. Burnout happens for many different reasons. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're not taking care of your health. Sometimes you run out of ideas. Sometimes nothing's coming out. Or nothing's coming out right. And one of my teachers had actually had some of the best advice for this was when you feel like your art doesn't look good, you're not getting any ideas, and you're not feeling like drawing. For those three things, take a break, don't force it, and try to draw in someone else's style, like a brand new style that you like. For example, if you like drawing with line art, but you're getting tired and something's not working with your art, try to draw in just vector lines or a lineless art style. Will you stick with it? Maybe not. However, it will make your brain relax a little bit and think about different things. And sometimes when you think about it, things differently, it can apply to your old art. And it can apply to your new art as well. And so your brain kind of sidesteps a brick wall it's been bashing its head against. The motivation you need, not the one you deserve. Yep. Sometimes you want really, really strong, passionate motivation especially for art, but you got to accept whatever energy you got. You can't push it. If you push it, you end up getting burnout sometimes, and that's even worse. I'm glad this calming lesson is in the background whilst I'm finna box with my computer because voice mod is unwieldy. Ooh, good luck. The brain thing you were mentioning earlier is actually at play with your method. Because the brain absolutely refuses to let ideas go, that creates a situation where your brain will blue screen. Even after you leave, your brain will continue to think about art for basically however long until it's finished. Yeah, I, did, I didn't... You said it much more eloquently than I ever could have. <laughs> Thank you for that, Pizzle. But yeah, it's, it's, for me, I need to distract myself. So a lot of the times when I am burnt out on art, I will play video games and I will cook. I will start testing out some wild, way out there recipes that I have no experience with just to let my brain think about something else. And then maybe if I'm feeling it, I'll try a new art style, you know? Trying to imitate someone else's style can be fun and a good way for me to mix things sometimes. Mm -hmm, yeah. 
Sun. Motivation is a fire. You can't keep making it grow bigger. Sometimes it has a limit, and that's okay. Leave it alone sometimes, but give it some fuel once in a while so it doesn't snuff out. Look at inspiration. Do some prompts. Draw a silly thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be big things. You can, you can feed it a lot of small things just to keep it going. Let's see. What other advice was there for brain tricks? Ah! All of my applications just closed. One moment. I'm fixing it. Pen and pencil. There we go. Perfect. All set up. Haven't heard that advice from Brent for all to try it. Good luck. I hope it helps. What is the punishment? <laughs> Do I get attention for being so late? Mm. You gotta give yourself compliments. Compliment yourself five times. There you go. What's your personal hardest style to try and imitate? Anything that has really, really detailed texturing or anything with lighting and skin. I am very bad at complex rendering. My rendering style, very simple. It would be cool to be able to do that. However, I am okay staying with a flat style. I like it. It's faster. Any technical difficulties, Grant? Oh, they're wonderful. They add a little flavor. <laughs> Ooh, let's see. I'm trying to think of anything else before I move on to how to draw faces and eyes. Mm. Now what if self-compliments are hard, but self-depreciation becomes significantly faster? Oh, that's another good point. Thank you for reminding me. Really, really important one. This is actually one of the most important ones. You're a baby. <laughs> Will I explain this? Yes. First I'll answer the question though. <laughs> Son, I'm baby! Yes! We're all babies. <laughs> uh, but self-depreciation always comes really quickly. It is kind of an instinct, especially with artists. Be careful of it. It applies to this rule. Self-depreciation is a defense mechanism for most artists because no one can tear down your art and things you care about if you tear them down first. And that is very, very tough to unlearn. You really have to romanticize your art until you feel comfortable in it. You don't have to share anything until you're ready. But even in your the privacy of your own home or your own room, you look at your art, be kind to yourself. Because at the end of the day, especially if you're just starting, you are a baby. <laughs> Think about it this way. I started drawing when I was like five. Maybe not consistently, but that's probably the first earliest drawing that I can remember. If I drew something like this, like these, when I was a baby, I would be ecstatic. I would be so happy that I created something because as, as a child, I don't know to be upset with myself. I don't know that, like, this is a low, low, what some might consider low quality art or, like, bad art, you know? As a child, I'm not smart enough to think of these things. So it's, it's really advantageous to do art early when you are a child because you don't know good from bad quite yet. You haven't learned that yet. However, as adults, we have been taught what is good and bad art, what art has value and what does not. And that is not a great thing. It can be fine when it comes to charging properly for your art. However, as an artist doing something for fun, it can be very detrimental. You have to remember that you are starting out. You are a baby artist. The only difference between me and y'all is that I did the baby art while I was a baby and y'all are doing it while you're an adult so you have the experience of most of us actually have the unfortunate experience of having something we love to get torn down or treated as a childish hobby or be t 
uh, tossed away, you know, and discarded or treated as something disposable or uh, blown off, you know? It sucks. It really sucks. And <laughs> it is difficult to pump yourself up for art. So, you gotta treat yourself like a baby. <laughs> you gotta be kind to yourself. You, despite being much older than me, at the time, like, we're not five-year-olds anymore. You're starting something new at an adult point in your life. You're going to have the same skills as a baby. So treat yourself as if you were someone learning at this age. That is a hard thing to do, but this is probably the biggest tip I can give. Literally, if you're struggling and you're looking at your art and comparing it to someone else's, go, they've probably been doing it for years, or they've had the skills and the technology to help them learn faster. I'm still beginning. I'm a beginner. That's okay. So you have to babysit yourself. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta babysit yourself. Discover the secret to eternal life. Don't practice art. Remain baby forever. <laughs> oh no. Figured it out. Those 10 years earlier versus now drawing progress memes always give me hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important. Another very small rule, this is a personal one, that I think is very, very good. Um, some people do this. Some people do this and it it, it makes me sad. Um, keep all your art. Even the ones you think are bad. Even the ones that you think are bad drawings. Because here's the thing. I look at my old art. And I love it. And not, and not in the, oh, look at how far I've come. Because yeah, of course, everyone loves to see their progress. But the ideas that I had when I was first starting drawing, when I was a teenager, when I was a kid, were so... They were so... What's the word I'm looking for? They just... <laughs> Younger me put everything I wanted to see on paper. And that's awesome. It is really, really awesome. It is kind of sad when I hear about people going like, oh yeah, I tore up my sketchbook or I burned it, I didn't like it. I'm like, but that had, that art kind of represented a part of you that was maybe hopeful or maybe like sad and depressed. But it was a part that you can look back at and see that you created something while you were going through this phase in your life. You should consider doing a pen and paper stream. Hmm. Probably not. Just because I don't have the camera to set it up. Like, I have a camera, but like, I don't have anything to set it up on. And I'd be too worried about like, <laughs> potentially just letting the camera slip. Retro, thank you for the hundred shinies. Humanity, turn to baby. Aren't we all just little babies to the cosmos? Logan, thank you for the hydrate. Good evening. Son, I love roasting my younger self's art and cringing at it, but it's also inspiring and unhinged. Neon colored OCs and weird monsters. Yeah, exactly. You get to see what you liked at the time and then how you refined that. It's really, really cool. So if you're feeling it, I cannot control you. You can destroy your art if you choose, but I do think it's better to keep it than to destroy it. Honey, a lot of anime. Too much anime. I'm afraid to look at my old drawings. Oh, so much anime. So much. Like, I, I read Tsubasa when I was a kid. I think I also read, like, XXX Holic and Bleach and Naruto. The library didn't have everything, but, like, they had enough for me to, like, reference for the drawings. It was awesome. First time I managed to catch the stream. Very helpful, but I gotta go. Thanks for dropping by, Sprawled. Now for a very sad ESC move. Oh yeah, it's late for you. Good on you for getting some rest. Son, honey, you were a clamp. Yes! I love clamp! 
I love him so much. I like still to this day, I really, really love XXXHolic. Like it's also, um, oh shoot. What is that? What is that manga where it's a guy with white hair who goes around exercising demons, but like it's, it's very heavily based on Japanese, uh, yokai folk tales. Oh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called, but it's, it's got like one season of, uh, anime. Mushishi! Yes, I love Mushishi! I love Mushishi so much! It's so good! Zap, thanks for the posture check! I love it so much! It's so good! Oh, I should actually reread it. I haven't read it in, like, years. Holocaust is probably the reason I drew characters- I drew characters really, really long, too. Um... <laughs> I remember Sakura was the reason I got really into drawing wings. It's like, oh! Angel wings! And then I learned bird wing anatomy. It was awesome. You're rewatching right now? Nice. Ah, oh, I'll have to watch that again. But yeah, so these are these are kind of the basic pieces of advice I have. I'm trying to think of any last minute ones. I'm sure more will come later. Uh, but yeah, the big one for me is you are a baby. Treat yourself kind. Because yeah, it's very easy to be self-depreciating just to defend yourself from potential... Like, it, here's here's a really good example that I had. Uh, you got a second season? A few moments later. I might have to watch it after this stream. Um, but here's, here's an example of something I used to do. I would show my friend a piece of art and go like, mm, I don't like how the legs came out, but here it is. Don't preface with that. Don't start... Don't show your art to someone and give yourself a criticism while you are showing it to them because that shows a bit of insecurity which is not bad it's not bad to be insecure with your art but sometimes when you do that your friend will also think it's okay to give criticism when in actuality what you probably need is encouragement um, so instead, just show it to your friends and go like, Hey, check out what I did! And for the most part, if your friends are cool, they will- they will tell you the things they like about it. And that will help you feel better. Now don't go showing around your friends just for compliments, show it if you want to show it. You know, there's- there's a time and a place. But... <laughs> yeah, it's... It, it's... a bit of a defense mechanism to pretend to be self-aware of your art flaws. To protect yourself from feeling bad when you receive criticism. You can lit you can literally go up to your friends and say, Hey, I thought this was really cool. I wanted to show y'all. And I was hoping you could tell me things you like about it. Or if you want to, you can say, give me some criticism. That is okay. But yeah, let people be excited for you. Exactly. Let your friends be excited for your art. Because a lot of the times, my friends were. I had one friend who I showed art to her because she also read uh, a lot of manga with me. She was one of the few uh, manga readers. But like, I would show it to her and she would give me anatomy tips immediately. This is just her personality. She's great. Um, and I loved it because I liked when she gave me criticism because to me, it was her way of showing that she cared and she was paying attention to my art. So yeah, keep that in mind. Criticism is also not all, not an attack on your skills. Sometimes it is them paying attention and showing that they are invested in your art. Again, communicate this to your friends if it makes you uncomfortable, but know that it oftentimes doesn't come from a malicious place. You, just keep in mind, you're an artist now. Artist emotions be super sensitive. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were going to say fanfic. Oh, I did show some of my fanfiction. Or it wasn't even fanfiction, it was like a self-insert story. It was bad. It was real bad. Uh, I got it back immediately the next day. Uh, I was lucky that the person didn't read it. And I was like, okay, cool. Actually, I just realized how bad this writing is. I'm going to hide this forever. And then I did. I did. I did. Yay! <laughs> Son, most of the time your friends will not roast your art unless it is well deserved or you just have jerk friends but if your friends draw they may give actual critique if they don't draw they're probably looking at a masterpiece in their eyes yes mm-hmm mm-hmm son's absolutely right and he got self insert fanfics let's go it would bad i was really into aragon at the time it would bad whoops
If you don't show your mistakes, people will most likely not notice them. Yes, good point. What if you're the only one providing advice and giving ideas to your own work, regardless if it's art or not? I don't think that's bad. If, it, if it's your art, that's usually how it ends up working, is you, you give yourself uh, tips. You can always post online and see if anyone will help give you criticism if you post, hey, I would like some art critique and I would like to improve, and I get some constructive criticism, you can see what you can get from there. You can post that in the Discord as well, um, and people are very, very kind and they can try to help best as they can. My mom found an old super cringy fanfic I wrote when I was 12 and went, oh, please discard that. <laughs> I'm kind of sad I didn't keep mine, but at the same time, I don't want to cringe like that ever again. When I was younger, I had a habit that when someone said I drew something cool, I would say, I know, right? And then got insecure when someone told me. That's a good instinct, though. If someone's like, that's really good art, you can just say, yeah, thanks. I think it's great. Being, being really upfront like that is good. Nothing wrong with being proud of your work. What's the most challenging thing that you enjoy drawing? Hands. I love drawing hands. It's so much fun. I don't know why, but it made me feel real good whenever I can draw a really, really tough hand perspective. It makes me feel so accomplished. Gonna be editing this stream for a health video, or at least the VOD gonna stay up. The VOD will stay up and it will go on YouTube. Yeah, I have a YouTube. Or at least a VOD channel, so you can check it out there. Won't just be on Twitch. Not all feedback is created equal. Some folks will give very useful critique, others will tell you stuff they may sound helpful, but it isn't. True. Some people will give critique that they think is useful, but will not really apply to your art. That is okay. It is up to you whether to decide to take that criticism or not. All right, so we're going to move on to head anatomy. I'm gonna to try to keep it as simple as possible for people who are starting a drawing. So for heads, I'm gonna draw pretty much like base model figure heads, just so you can get an idea. A lot of the times people start out like this, drawing the outline of the head and drawing the eyes like this. This lacks anatomy. What does that mean? We're gonna draw the bones underneath. So we're gonna draw the main skull of the head. I usually do a circle, a line through the middle of it. And then I guess, yeah, my, my brain does this automatically. I gotta, I gotta take that back, back a step. But I'll draw the jaw. Usually it's at a halfway point for me. You can push and stretch and squash this however you like, based on your designs. I usually do it like this. It's like in the middle. That's where the eye line is. And then I can just choose the jaw shape however I like. If you want to make it a more square jaw, just leave it like this. If you want to make it more rounded, you can make it rounder or sharper. If you want to make it chibi, you can just like really make it small. But generally, yeah, the, the base of the head is like this. I'm going to turn this down. So I will start with a base like this and go on to a new layer. If you are doing this on pencil and paper, just draw this very lightly. Draw it really lightly so that you can very easily draw on top. So for eye placements, or well, I guess I'll start with face proportion. Face proportions are usually... If I'm not mistaken, it's two thirds of the head is the face. So some people consider the hairline included in the face. The way I've, I've been taught is that it's the eyebrows to the jaw pretty much is the face and the forehead is separate. So the, if you're wondering why my terminology might be a little weird, that's why. Then this would be around where the brows would be and this is where the face would end. If we're drawing a straight on face, the eyes would be around here. So we're gonna separate that into two. And then the nose, it can vary. It can be up here, it can be down here. It can kind of be wherever you choose. I usually like to put it right, right down here in the like bottom quarter. 
and then the mouth would be a little lower. The nose would be here. Just gonna do a dot for the eyes. Very simple. I'm not going into too complex of eye shapes quite yet. And the eyebrows. And that's a pretty basic head shape. Pretty basic. This is what the a base model would kind of look like for the base of a head. If you want to add hair on top, I would recommend adding a bit of volume, you know? Instead of starting it right here, you can. It'll make the head look a bit smaller. I like it when there's a bit of volume to the hair. Oh yes, ears. If I'm not mistaken, it starts around where the eyes are. And then goes down to the nose? No, not fully to the nose. Yeah, somewhere around there. They're not too big. You can always make them bigger or smaller. Sorry, I zoned out. If it, this was answered, I cannot sub to you with my Prime Gaming. Is it something on Creator to turn off, or is it an issue on my end? That might be an issue on your end. Might need to refresh the page, or... See if you still have Prime, I guess? Symmetrical ruler, really easy. Yep, you can definitely use a symmetrical ruler. So, also, here's something I see people do a lot. Drawing the eye line and cross smack in the middle of the circle. That's too high. Yeah, that's a little too high. I will... Good point, son. So some people draw the eye line way up here. It can be up here if you are pushing a design. Uh, it is usually a, not the half. Maybe around the half, but not quite. Maybe a little higher than that. Again, push these however you like. I'm just giving my basics. I can tell you like volume as you have floofy hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just adds a lot more like a, like a softness. Everybody gets one sub with their prime subscription, but you got to make sure that the last one's one's over. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's how you draw a straight on head. Let's move on to a profile. This one uh, can be tricky. I didn't learn how to draw profile until I was like... Maybe 13. Maybe 13. Even then, it was rough. What I ended up doing was I, I copied a lot, like I traced over a lot of manga in my sketchbook. Try to break down, not trace actually, just copy. So I didn't put it like under the page. I would look at it and look at my paper, then look at it and look at my paper and break down where everything was placed. This is probably the closest I can get to doing it without visually tracing it. So I'll draw straight down the head. This is the head circle again. Again, the eyes are a bit in the lowest part. We're going to go to... Mm, Maybe not half, maybe two thirds this way. And that's where I'm going to put the jaw. I'm going to put it a bit more like this. The nose, the bridge of the nose, doesn't start exactly where the eyes are sometimes. Because it's different. If I draw the brow, sometimes it starts up here. Let's soften that brow, actually. And then you could just do a straight line down here. Still got the skull back here. I'm actually going to make it a little bigger. That's just my style. Ears. About the same proportion rules for faces. This is kind of how I do head profiles. Sometimes I cheated a little bit. Like I go... It's more simplified. So instead of that, I'll just do... And then I do this for a lot of very, very quick sketching. Soften this too. There we go. The nose can be whatever shape you want. It can be really straight. It can be curved down. It can be like uh, arched. It is up to you. Cosmic Crustacean. I definitely read that wrong. Uh, Cosmic Crustacean. Thank you for the gifted sub to Justin Jester. Are you actually teaching? Uh, I'm not actually a teacher. 
I was going to be a teacher actually uh, before I went to art school. I was like, yeah, I would love to be a teacher because I, I like math and I like languages. So I could travel a bunch with that. And then I, <laughs> I got really bored of school real quickly, which was unfortunate. Uh, and then I just took a break and went to art school. And here I am. A VTuber. <laughs> Grim Garlic, thank you for the gift of some. Mood, yeah, it'd be like that sometimes. Sometimes you think you know what you want, and then you think about it a little harder and actually start doing it. Then you're like... Actually, no, this is boring. Just dropped out entirely? None wrong with that. Yeah, Gecko, what a ride. Teaching is very bureaucratic and underpaid. Yeah, that's kind of what my understanding was like. I realized that I could totally mess up a kid's career, and I was like, actually, I don't think that's a good idea. Not for me. Our entire schooling sister needs to update, but what can you expect when it was made to turn out factory workers? Yeah, true. Yeah, let's do a three quarter head and then we can move on to eyes. We're gonna go three quarters. So again, we're drawing the middle of the face, drawing the jaw, so the lines will also curve. This one's, three quarters is a little harder. You get used to it pretty quickly though, and then suddenly you're only drawing things in three quarter. Eyeball. Eyeball. Well, it's actually supposed to be looking straight, so eyeball. Eyeball. Nose. Yeah, there we go. So sometimes people draw heads like this. Where they have the sides cut. That is also fair. You can definitely do that. Because that means when you rotate it, it'll have these cool little cylinders. Like the brain is a cylinder instead of a just a sphere. And it's all up to your comfort levels and whatever you like more. I keep it simple because my brain already does this for myself up there, so I don't need to draw it. Yeah, I have to cut out the bit myself usually. Yeah. I think the suede cuts in the proper Loomis method. Proper Loomis method? Man, I've forgotten so many terms. <laughs> Hero about you ripped your paper erasing. No! Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that is one of the upsides of pen. Because you can't erase, you can't rip the paper. Watching your stream art made me realize I'd flip the canvas on a piece I've been working for eight hours. <gasps> well, better late than never. Loomis was the anatomy artist dude. Oh, gotcha. Oh gosh, do I even remember my teacher's names now? Maybe not. Oh gosh. My brain's already forgetting them, no. But yeah. We did the head. Now let's do the eyes. Eyes are fun. If I was to recommend a new artist who already understands gesture, and something to learn and focus on, I would recommend eyes. So, does anyone, <laughs> all right class, does anyone know why I recommend eyes? Anyone know why eyes are so important? Anybody? Baby grandma with the amnesia again. Listen, listen, sometimes the information tries to hold on as best it can, but I bump my head every once in a while and then it disappears. Because they're the focal point of the face, window of the soul, eyes of the powerhouse of the face, Black Myra, I like how you think. Son, they let me look at honey. <laughs> Shush you. <laughs> the windows to the soul, because they're the hardest thing to paint on a miniature. Uh, true. Eyes communicate a vast amount of information, more so than the mouth. They're expressive. Yep. Because the focal point of the illustration is the vocal point. Yes. They can be drawn in a lot of different ways. They can also see the future. They detail emotion best. Eyes have depth and are the first thing people are drawn to. Okay, so y'all pretty much know it. So eyes are incredibly important. 
I will just reiterate the points that y'all already clearly know. You're just... <laughs> I have such intelligent students. <laughs> Don't use them to perceive me. This is a lesson. Look at your notes. But yeah, so... Brains are meant to focus on... So to, to make sure an emotion reads in a piece, the first thing people tend to look at is usually the eyes. Just think about when you're interacting with another person. The first thing you look at are the peepers. Because they convey so much more emotion than the rest of the face. Eyebrows and eyes, where people are looking, and, and how they look, can tell people so much about this person, or at least what they're going through. Griffiths, go ahead, draw, do it, do it. Um, it's just how we evolved. It, it's it's so that we can very quickly assess a situation based on like, is this person hurt? Is this person sad? Is this person happy? Is their person distressed? Is do I need to be distressed? We kind of also mimic emotions too, to a certain extent. So if we look at someone who's happy, you are more likely to feel happy and at ease because you look at this person and see nothing is wrong. I don't need to have the fight or flight instinct. If you look at someone who is distressed and they're crying, your brain goes, uh oh, someone crying, something wrong. Social instinct kicks in of either I have to do something or some people have the opposite where it's like, I gotta leave and give them privacy, you know? So our brains really are drawn to eyes. They're, they can tell you everything. <laughs> so it's very important that if you have eyes in your piece that they are focused on. There are some pieces where you don't have to draw eyes. For example, if you draw fan art of um, Gojo, you know, the, no eyes, or Kakashi where he's only got one eye, you know, stuff like that. That is also totally fine. Doesn't mean it's a bad piece at all. But eyes. <laughs> Get them out of here. Get rid of those peepers. So I'm gonna focus on different kinds of eyes. Here are the eye shapes that I would recommend starting with as someone who has tried to learn placement, you know? I'm drawing a face. Just gonna draw a real basic face. Two lines. That is what I'd start with. Especially for your roughs. Echo you yeah, about the eyes. Just become a background artist, you never draw eyes. But I love drawing eyes though, and I don't like drawing backgrounds. Uh, but yeah, I would start with this. And then add eyebrows, because eyebrows can help convey feelings very, very well. Just one line can add expressiveness to this. Asky, thank you for the hydrate. And Cosmic, thank you so much for that redeem. I'll just get through this real quick and then we'll get to that. Do a background of just eyes? That would be cool. Eyes are the most important, yet honey still get flustered by eye contact. It feels like I'm being seen. Cosmic, thank you. Fact about the eye. The fact that our Solera is as prominent as it makes it as it is makes it easier to read exactly. Where someone is looking, such as that an observant professor in a large room can tell if a student in the back is looking at his nose or his eyes. This cannot be said of beastly eyes. Yeah, it's really cool. We have, apparently wolves have a similar thing of they can tell where their prey looks because usually their prey will look to their den. So that's where a bigger meal is. Humans can do the same thing. We can see the eye directions of prey to better gauge if there are more of the animal we're looking at. But yeah, I would recommend starting with these eyes. Just dots and then eyebrows. Now you can go more complex. I probably won't go into it too much today for the complexity of eyes. I can go over it, uh, but for now, if you're just starting, this is a great place because it forces you to think about how to make eyes expressive and how to make eye direction a thing with so little. Thank you, I'm working hard on that. Good luck. 
Dogs can do the trail try a uh, little try gaze thing too. You can look at the thing in the dog and it will understand the association. Mm. Other humans are prey, no it's down. <laughs> uh, the eyebrows really get me. Yeah, the you can do a lot with eyebrows. They're very, very expressive. Oh, I keep pressing save instead of undo. Even you don't even have to do two separate lines. You can just do one. And you can already express so much. You know? Just one. Makes it really, really good. Uh, cause in fact there is a actual eye rule where usually you want to draw a mask around your character's eyes, and that's how you line up the eyebrows. That's for cleaner uh, expressions. Because if you have one like this, and then one like this, it doesn't line up as well, so... You do this. They line up a bit nicer, you know? That's one way of doing eyebrows. So yeah, I recommend just doing two dots. Very simple eyebrows. Sound like a domino mask. Yeah! Like the Incredibles mask. Jim Carrey's a good example of expressive eyebrows. A whole expressive face of that. Yep. Mm hmm. Jim Carrey's a good example. Whew. Uh, let's pull up. We do have a song redeem. Also, Elkron, thank you for the breathe redeem. Dream is exactly that's what it is. It's the DreamWorks eyebrows. Cosmic, thank you for the gift of sub tube. Cosmic Fake Queen. Whew. And generic anime antagonist. Thank you for the sub with Prime. Welcome in. And Grim Garlic, thank you for the gifted sub. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss any miss any notifications. Let's turn off this music real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Blues Clues right now. I'm not gonna sing Blues Clues. Echo, I'm off for tonight. Have fun. Thank you for coming, Gecko. Get some rest. It's good to see you. Thank you, guy. A few moments <laughs> later. A little bit. How'd you rig your hand? It is, if you look in the About section, there is a uh, tech section. This program made by Virtual Graves. Once upon a December? I actually did that earlier this stream. And it's singing perfect. Sound for racing my Hot Wheels. <gasps> Got Hot Wheels? Peace. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna try singing a new song that I haven't sung before. I've been listening to it a lot though. There we go. Ultra Maximum. Thank you for the sub. Welcome in. And try singing She's All I Wanna Be by Tate, Tate McRae. See how it goes. You wanna go with the small ways and the perfect smile. Someone who's out every weekday in her dad's new car. You tell me I shouldn't stress out, say it's not that hard. But I just got a feeling, this'll leave an ugly scar. You say she's nothing to worry about. Then why did you close your eyes when you said it out loud? Stupid boy making me so sad. Didn't think you could change this fast. She's got everything that I don't have. How could I ever compete with that? I know you'll go and change your mind. One day wake up and be bored with mine. She's got everything that I don't have. And she's all I want to be. All I want to be so bad. So bad. She's got everything that I don't have. Mm -hmm. 
not someone you can show off whenever you go out. She'll wear a tight mini black dress with all her friends around. And then you'll probably spend the night at her big house. And then I'll, and by then I'll be someone you've forgotten about. If you say she's nothing to worry about, then why did you close your eyes when you said it out loud? Stupid boy making me so sad, didn't think you could change this fast. She's got everything that I don't have. How could I ever compete with that? I know you'll go and change your mind One day wake up and be bored with mine She's got everything that I don't have And she's all I wanna be All I wanna be so bad So bad She's got everything that I don't have And she's all I wanna be all I want to be so bad. Thank you for waiting. Whew. Alrighty. There's the art arm. Bum, bum, bum. Also, Crimson Lord, thank you for the sub for three months. Oh my gosh. Welcome in. I hope you're doing well. Thank you. Hey, Kino. Not much is going on. We're just doing an art lesson today. I was just singing a song. It is a sad song, Hygog. Yeah, but it's a really, really catchy one. Uh, Foul thanks. Thank you for the ear wiggles. <laughs> song doesn't apply for honey, though, because she's anything but forgettable. Thank you. That's a very nice sentiment. Uh, right. Okay. Let's go over different styles of eyes, or different eye shapes you can do to make your characters a little bit more diverse. So I'm just going to do a bunch of different eyes. This is actually what I used to do on my math homework. I used to do this so much while I was in class. It should have been distracting, but it actually was fun, and I still did my math homework, so we're all good. No problems there. So this is how I like to draw a basic eye. Got the pupil. We got this. Pretty simple. Couple lines. Not too difficult. You can also apply it to this. You can make your eyes nice. It can it can add a little bit more expression. I haven't heard that song before. It seems like a nice companion to Mr. Cellophane. Ooh. Yeah, it's called. Pull it up. I just deleted it. I just closed the tab. Oh, right. It's by Tate McRae. I think it is. Yeah, Tate McRae. Your dumb doodles on my desk in math class until my teacher got angry at me instead. I did the same thing. My teacher never got angry at me, thankfully. I used to draw a lot of the suit in high school. It helped me focus. I was an online teacher. I still do it. It still helps me focus somehow. I don't know why. Like when you want to give your brain a second thing to focus on, it, it kind of helps it out. All right, let's see. Another one, you can uh, do a rounder pupil. Maybe like you can do a different eye shape. Maybe a different eyebrow. You can also give, give a little line inside the pupil or the, the iris. Just small things that can add more detail or just differentiate a character when you draw them quickly. Oh, thank you, guy. I always said to myself I'd want to start learning how to draw, but I never ever started which I did when I had the time. I think you still can. That's the fun thing. You just gotta really remember to treat yourself like a baby. Because, you know, you're basically starting at the same level as a baby. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is actually quite good. It means your brain is very malleable to new stuff. You learn pretty quickly. The nice thing about learning as an adult versus as a kid is that when you're learning as a kid, you're kind of just following what you can see. 
But when you're learning as an adult, there's so many resources and you can actively search them out and understand them much, much clearer. That you can choose which way you learn and what direction you go in. Rather than try to learn everything at once and cram it all in into a style. Master Graveheart, thank you for the resub with Prime. Welcome back. Happy six months. Finally, wish I could go Prime sub on a tablet. Good to see you. Go. Thanks, Graveheart. I hope you're doing well. And me on said for Feral Toy. <laughs> thank you for the gifted sub. I hope I pronounced that okay. Did art for a bit when I was younger, but I kind of stopped to focus more on writing. Honestly, I've kind of want to get back into it. Go for it. Now's the best time. Let's see. I do like a more anime, like a like a droopy anime eye. All of these, these are just variations of this, which is probably this is what you should start off with. And go down here. And make your eyes more complicated if you want to add personalized details to your characters. I'm a baby at heart, and by that I mean I have low emotional and impulse control. Well, that probably means you're pretty honest. That's got a, that's a good thing. I have ADD and I need to learn all the things. The desire to learn everything at once is strong. I'm trying to learn adding physical activity can help. Doodling, pacing, tapping fingers it helps the brain through another layer of memory process. Oh. One time I showed up to class and there was a bottle of cleaning stuff and a sponge waiting on the desk when I got there. That sounds kind of mean. Mr. Gilbert, you did things. As a teacher, I've studied this actually. As you said, we have so many resources actually inside our heads. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Everything can be very overwhelming. So the most important thing is just to be nice to yourself and have fun. Let's see, what's another type of eye? Really, really big iris. Oh no! Grim Garlic, thank you for the sub for three months. Welcome in. We're having a good evening. Thank you very much. I'm trying to learn different languages. For example, I'm trying to learn my native language, English. Pretty terrible at it. English is a hard language. It's a very, very rough language. Don't, don't, don't be too harsh on yourself. That, that's a weird one. This looks like a dragon's eye. Cool. What if I find fun in being mean to myself? Ooh. That's a dangerous route. Because sometimes... Sometimes it's fun to be mean to yourself. Because it gives you a sense of control. It's also a little addictive because then you validate your own opinions about yourself. And that can be... Careful. Careful with that one. It's not necessarily... Always harmful. They can be. Arsenphilia. Arson here. This is a safe space. Uh, just here for the train. Thank you for the sub with the free sub with Prime. Ah. Happy two months. Welcome back. And it's hello. Thank you for the gifted sub. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. What would you say is an easy language to learn? I'm curious now. Spanish, probably. Spanish is pretty simple. But then again, it's it's simple as someone who understands English. Took a couple of semesters of Spanish, actually. It was not bad. It's like a French and English had a hate baby. Weird way to describe a language, I know, but... It's like the, the, the flair of French with the rules of English. I have a question for you, D&D players. If I get into D&D, am I able to do most of the... <laughs> most unrealistic thing imaginable, like defeating a demon general with a chair? Yes, you can. Absolutely. You could definitely do that. Jokers, thank you for the 400 shinies. Thanks for the lesson, honey. Great breaking down concepts. Thank you. I'm very glad that y'all find this interesting and also helpful. Not going to go into too much detail because I think I've thrown a lot of information at y'all. 
Um, so after I draw a couple more eyes, we'll pretty much go into Q&A section, where you can ask more detailed questions about like motivation, gesture, stick figures, where to start, stuff like that. The most unrealistic thing in the game itself is so... Anything you do is unrealistic. Portuguese is kind of tough? I can imagine, yeah. This whole stream has made me want to ask my older sister on how to draw. I've seen her draw and she does some of the same techniques you do. And she has an art style that uses more realistic anatomy, but she's busy with her work at school. Ah, uh, yeah. The fun thing is, if you want to and, and your sister is open to it, you can ask if she wants to go to like, uh, draw outside or something. Or even just watch a show and draw something together. That's the fun thing, if you share a hobby with your sibling, you can see if they want to do some stuff. See if they want to hang out and you can connect with them a little more. I'm trying to think of different diverse eye types. That's pretty good. You can kind of see how this can translate to any of these shapes. If you just push them, change the shape, you can do a lot with them. I would still start with these and then move on to these. This, this is your bread and butter. It's very good. Like something in the corner channel in Discord. <laughs> Alright, I'll give it a shot. Son, drawing eyes are so fun. They can be very so, so much. Oh, they can. It's so much fun drawing eyes. I love them so much. Oh, speaking of, Sun is an excellent artist. Like, Sun can draw exceptionally fast. It is very, very cool to watch. I can't draw too fast. Like, I, I'm... In terms of professional artists, I am very... Average speed at best. But Sun draws. If you have the liquify tool, you can use that to push features until you're happy. Right. I don't think I have the liquify tool though. That that's I think one of the updates that I didn't grab. Thank you very much, guy, for the shout out to Sun. If y'all want to actually see some really really good art and and you don't quite have the attention span to stick through a full art stream for me, like 100 check out Sun stuff because Sun draws so quickly. You, it's kind of a you blink and you miss it. So it it really catches your attention really really well. Ah, and there's Sun's Twitter. Sun's art. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Highly recommend. Jokers, thank you again. Highlights for the eyes. Ooh, yeah. Highlights for the eyes. We can do that. I'm going to draw it in white just so y'all can see. You can kind of add them anywhere you like. I like to add them to the tops of the corners. One thing to keep in mind, um, you can make them any shape you want, really. You can also make them just lines. I like the lines ones. They're fun. One thing to keep in mind is usually if the light is in one corner, it should not be in the opposite. It should be in the same corner because if the light source is coming from down here, yeah, it can be in the middle of the eye. If the light source is coming from the side, it'll be on this side of the eyes, right? That is one thing to be careful of if you're using the uh, mirroring tool. Also, thank you for the level two hype train, y'all. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Is the reason you like drawing eyes so much because they're the windows to the soul? Hmm. Maybe. I just like- I think I like how expressive they are. You can really show almost everything in someone's eyes. Vaporia, no! The hype train's over! The hype train ended! Ha ha! Ha ha! It's fine! Train left the station! We're good. On the topic of eyes again, there's seven primary eye fold types, which can be pretty fun to draw. There are a lot of different types of eyes. I don't think I'll go into them because I think... I've thrown enough information at y'all, in terms of, like, technical information. And I I, I don't want to overwhelm your brain. <laughs> this, this is... This has been a very densely packed session. Hype train gone. But the hype train's gone, Vaporeon! Wait, wait, wait. Slender Scoot, a woo. A woe, my bad. Thank you for the hundred shinies. Them Clash of Cans can be looking different than I remember. Yeah, we got an update. <laughs> Thank you for the 10 gifted subs we pouring. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. That is a lot. I showed up and overwhelmed you. A woo. Did. Did, though. I studied to be a character concept artist. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> so it's 
absorbing a lot of details and colors and spitting it out fast in a lot of styles. So it's not very consistent or the cleanest, but it is in fact fast. See, that's the thing. I take so long to get concepts out, but I'm fast at anatomy and gesture because that's what really caught my eye. And I love drawing anatomy and gesture because I like the emotion and the, the energy you can put into it. But refining it is difficult. Poor man. <laughs> but I did it anyways. What you can do about it, you lovely nerd. Insubordination? From my students? In my class? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Give yourself five compliments. Go for it. Or I do a hype train like the one of the manual my cards that squeak. Please, my favorite is neither overwhelmed. My brain is neither overwhelmed nor underwhelmed. It's evenly and fully whelmed. All right, that's a good point then. All right, these are kind of an example of how I would do the eyes. But let's go back to. This is a good time. We've I've kind of thrown all the information I'd planned to throw in at y'all today. So, we back at. Where is it? Q and A time. If y'all want, I can assign you homework. I, it's not mandatory, it's just a recommended. But yeah, I can throw y'all homework later too. I need gestures work because Chef is like, ah, oh, thank you. I did so many hours of life drawing. <laughs> it's stuck. Insubordination? Insubordination? In this chat? More likely than you think. Oh. Oh, Black Mario, you right though. <gasps> Snow! <laughs> thank you for the raid! Welcome, raiders! Son, you want honey? You want homework, son? Extra credit? All right, all right. I'll, I'll introduce myself to the new peeps and then I'll give you homework. Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> I love Honey Nut Cheerios. They're delicious. They're one of my favorites when I was a kid. I love them so much. <gasps> Hi, Moon. Ah. Speaking of, uh, Soda, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, raiders. My name is Honey. It is a pleasure to meet all y'all. I just, uh, I'm having a little Q&A session after this lesson. I will go do a little recap of today's lesson for later. Uh, we're just talking about how to start doing art from scratch, pretty much, if you don't know how to draw anything or if you only started with stick figures. <laughs> insubordination is the best nation. Oh, of course you're here, Dingus. Of course you're here. As soon as I say insubordination, there you are. Oh. <laughs> but Snub, I hope you're having a good stream. What were y'all up to? Oh, you just chat? Speaking of, thank you guy for that shout out to Soda Snub. Snub's art is actually really, really good too. Like, I highly recommend checking out Snub's art. It is so, so good. And so, ah, I love the colors. Also the proportions, the way they draw. It's just so, it's all good stuff. All good stuff. Or life questions or whatever. I'm not you. <laughs> True. You could you could ask those questions too. I would prefer if we stayed on topic though. It would it would help for this uh, this lesson. <laughs> now we did some tier lists and stuff. Oh, tier lists. Hmm. I'm curious now. <laughs> Subordination at this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the internet, localized entirely within this chat. Yes. Yes. Hey, Buon, what's up? We're screaming at Snub's horrible taste in food. Ah! <laughs> I see. I see. What food crimes did Snub commit? I am curious. Dingus, I just like to look at the board of buttons on a person and seeing what they do when I push. Dingus is the kid that walks into an elevator, hits all the buttons, and doesn't even stay in the elevator. Like, he just leaves. That's dingus. Here's one. How do you train your mind to draw? I have ADHD, so it's pretty hard to get down even the basics, so if I want some tips. Alright, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Good time to go over a little review. Oop. Turn this off. Get this out of here. There we go. So, fun brain tricks I found. I do not, to my knowledge, have ADD or ADHD. Have not been diagnosed. So, um, just letting y'all know. These are the tips that I have found work best for me. Brain tricks. 
thing is, Hawakwe was <laughs> looking like a badass. Oh, the, like, the little gremlin he is. Like a real art question. How did you draw yourself so cute? I'm sure it's because you So anyway, brain tricks. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, uh, so f if you have a hard time focusing, here are a couple tricks that I found work pretty well. Uh, use paper and pen, specifically. Try to avoid using pencil if you're having a hard time putting things on paper because you're afraid of committing. Pen forces you to make a decision and draw. Don't have to draw characters or anything. Just literally draw scribbles and doodles and eyes, anything that tickles your fancy, you know? Also, waste pages. Don't think that every page has to be a masterpiece or has to be perfectly made. Just use it. The page is there to be drawn on. Go ahead. I think for focus, motivation, and burnout are weirdly linked in a very strange way. If you're trying to get motivated... It just says donkey and now I'm confused and distracted. Oh, great. Uh, motivation. Motivation is hard to find because it's different for everybody, comes from random places, and disappears without a trace. Same thing with burnout, except burnout, there's a couple stages and you recognize when you're burnt out. The best thing to do when you have some motivation is not to grasp onto it and latch onto it as hard as you can and try to keep doing that thing that has the motivation. Just hold it gently. Just be like, all right, I have this motivation. Let's see where it takes us. Just very gently, casually, like, let it let it carry you. Instead of grabbing it and saying, we're going this direction. You know, it's hard. Just this uses herself for reference a lot. I do use, okay, so yeah. Um, whenever I do anatomy checks and I need to use myself for reference, I will just take a picture of myself doing the pose and then put it into CS Paint, and then, you know, use that as reference. It's very handy. Phones are wonderful. You can use them for their, for a lot of stuff. Pink Clubs, thank you for the resub with Prime. Happy six months. And Golodot, thank you for the hydrate. Folks, I think was a recommendation earlier. Yeah, so, um, someone brought up, it's, um, uh, Artist's Atlas for Human Anatomy, I think was one of them. I know that was one of... One of the books I've read that's really, really good for anatomy. I think another one is... If you look at a lot of uh, anatomy for sculptors, you'll find very similar stuff, too. It's very, very helpful. You mentioned before that getting a book with a cool cover will make you more inclined to draw. But what about other things to use with a notebook? Should it exclusively be used for drawings only, or should you use the pages to describe what you want to draw, or almost like a title card? I would not, personally, I would just use it for everything. I wouldn't try to limit one book for one thing. Use the paper for anything. Sometimes when an idea strikes, you don't want to try to find the right notebook. You just want to find a notebook, write it down as fast as possible. What art teacher or artist in general do you usually refer to when it comes to drawing figures? Oh, drawing figures. A lot of the times when we were trained, um, for life drawing, we were we would look at like Renaissance stuff because that's where like sculptures are mostly preserved, and so you get to look at their works. Um, but for the most part, yeah, we just referenced books, like textbooks. Is the VOD going to be saved? Yes, VOD is going to be saved. It is also going up onto my VOD channel on YouTube. If you exclamation point YouTube, you will find it, and that's where all my VODs are. Doing fan art of different characters and putting them in my own art style, but it's kind of tricky since I have to simplify their features on something. Sometimes the proportions go out of whack. How do I simplify features while keeping the proportions intact? Good question. I hmm. I think that's just a practice thing. There's nothing wrong with a character being design, keeping the design elements of the original art, but also being pushed into your style. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're trying to draw more accurately to the style, try to analyze how they proportion the bodies, what the face proportions are, what kind of line art they have. Just kind of study that for a bit. Neko, come on! Every once in a while I'll just see Neko go, honey, oh, he's truly cute. And I'm like, shh, I'm a professor. 
I cannot be receiving compliments from my students. Uh, thing is, mad scribblings littered around the crime scene, all of which are, are, are prompts of art that have never been accomplished. Yeah, I, I don't, I specifically don't do like Inktober or Gobtober because I know that if I do that, I'm going to get disappointed with myself when I don't make it. Uh, I sometimes don't. Come on, guy. Why would you pin that message? But uh, sometimes it, it's it's too much pressure for me. So I like to relax. Found that you can kind of copy the proportions, but change the angles of the feature. Yeah, you can do that. Like, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do fan art. And I don't think there's any really wrong ways. I kind of miss the whole stream of catching up with grand folks, which is great, but also want to get that good art advice. There will be a VOD. Also, I hope you're having fun with that puppy soon. I did draw objects a lot, so my mind is set on finding the right angle when it comes to drawing arms and body. That's good instinct. Proportion and perspective. Difficult. But if you're used to drawing 3D objects or simplifying 3D objects, that can really help. So, honey, I sleep in the class. Sorry, what part of this is going to be in the t exam? All of it. But Sun said he wanted homework. Uh, so for homework, if y'all would like some, let me write it down real quick. This is for extra credit. It's not mandatory. I do recommend it. Uh, for homework, I recommend drawing your OC or any generic character. Uh, in five poses. Doesn't have to be complex, they can literally just be like this. Sitting around, reading a book or something. Five poses. Try to limit your time from... You can try doing different poses. I would try not to take more than 20 minutes. Propose. That's what I recommend. That will take me ages. That's why there's a time limit. I want you to try to draw these as fast as you can. Oh no, this is actually the type of practice I've been needing to do lately. You <laughs> thank you, teacher. You're welcome, son. Yeah. So here's the thing. Sometimes people draw too complex, too like they start off going like this is gonna be a big piece. I want you to draw quick. I want speed, because here's the thing. When you draw with a lot of speed, your brain gets rid of the unnecessary details. If you think you can do this, and you think this is like baby homework, instead of 20 minutes, make it uh, three minutes. Challenge yourself. Three minutes, three minute poses. Draw five of them, go for it. Or if you're feeling it, go for 15, you know? Push yourself. But don't burn out. Bill, thank you for the posture check. Hmm. Teacher, my dog eat my homework. Oh wait, it's for another day. Teacher, my dog will eat my homework. Mmm, nutritious homework. <laughs> ah, homework for honey. Bring back snack and prepare for the compliments. Or you know that you like a snack. I like a snack won't stop you. You'll distract from the next time, though. And baby, we'll use 20 minute propose. Absolutely fine, Duke. Cool, that. Thanks for the breathe reading. The only, my only problem is my mind constantly makes OCs. Which do I choose? If you cannot choose, draw a generic stickman. You know, the one, the, the stickman I mentioned earlier. I will show that to you all. There we go. Do these. These stickmen, either one of them, doesn't matter. The idea is not to make perfect pieces, it's to draw faster. One of the pieces, the pieces of advice we covered earlier was fail faster and smarter. So I want you to try your best to do this homework. I don't expect you to, to succeed at this. And that's unintentional. I want you all to draw fast and get impressions and gestures, think about them, and then reference them. Like, you look at reference. 
and see what you could have improved on. And that is learning. That is progress. Fail faster and be smarter in how you learn. It is rough. And you can use these time limits as well. Also remember, you are a baby. Be nice to yourself. You're still learning. You wouldn't be mean to a baby if they tried to draw things, would you? Don't be mean to yourself. Both at the same level. Okay, something we learned in graphic design. To simplify, you have to take the important features, the identity of the product. There are many remarkable things to make it what it is. It's not just what we see, but it's concept. But it can also help to write down keywords to help simplify design. True. You want to make sure that it's recognizable. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know? Once you study and understand the identity, what makes it what it is, you start to take it to your style. Remember, you are not redrawing or redesigning it. You are doing it in your style, but you want to keep it identity. Yes. All right, sweet Anya. Good luck. Repeated question. No worries. I've, uh, there's a lot happening in chat. Don't feel bad if there's a repeated question. Uh, do you have any recommendations for type of pencils, pens, or other writing tools for drawing such as certain pencil brands or different from mechanical and wooden or anything else important? Nope, I do not. If anything, get cheap pens. Like uh, ballpoint pens. Just save money. You just want to have writing implements that you won't feel bad if you lose, but you also won't feel bad for using. Because if you buy expensive ones that are fe like felt tipped or very like delicate, you will be con like, in my case, you'll be constantly worried about: Am I using this for the right piece? Am I using this properly? Am I going to damage it if I draw too quickly? Get a ballpoint pen, something durable, something that you won't worry about wrecking, and draw. So I got like this lesson. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Thing is, someone be in class that day. I'll be sick. can't stay mad at you, dingus. <laughs> what a well-drawn stick figure. That's my animation teacher taught me. Yeah! Stick figures. They're really good. The reason- the whole reason I did this, uh, this chat, pretty much this lesson, was because while I was doing art, so many people were coming into chat going, wow, that's beautiful. I can only draw stick figures. It happens so often. And it- it's- I know it's not malicious or anything, but it's a bit of a backhanded compliment in that it's a, you're so good, I'm not. It's like, don't put yourself down to boost me up. I've done this for years. Also, stick figure drawing, excellent place. That is actually a really, really good place. You, it, it means you're at a good point in your learning. You just got to keep pushing forward a little bit. Be kind to yourself. Wood steel candy from baby. It's small business. Rack up some sin points. Dingus. <laughs> Dingus runs over people like in... <laughs> GTA. It's a game. So the wholesome goblin villain arc evolved to the wholesome goblin teacher arc. Character growth. I can be evil and a teacher. I just gave you homework. Can I do the homework tomorrow after school? Yes, you may. Just an innocent goblin teacher doesn't understand her students would, in fact, insult babies. Still thinks she's evil. Why would you insult babies? They didn't do anything. They're still learning. They're not people yet. First thing happened to me like three days ago. Four months of YouTube tutorials and drawings. I forgot them all in a brain. <laughs> Sucks. Buy cheap, save money, spend it on cute cop. Or save up. If you decide art is a hobby, save up for a good sketchbook. Or save up for potentially a, a reasonably priced tablet within your budget. If you get into art. Sun, cheap 2B pencils and pens that don't smudge. Yes, actually, that is a good point. If you, if you can find pens and pencils that don't smudge, that's ideal. I just, uh, the main reason I say ballpoint is because there's so many times where I've been bought, or I have bought, fine liners, and I don't use them for fear of pressing too hard and breaking them. You want to be, be be able to draw quickly. Ballpoint pens are supposed to be durable. Man, I must be an idiot. Mine always been a broken mess. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're just very strong. Maybe you are very, very strong. My AP art thesis was using cheap stuff to do things even though I had access to nice stuff. Tools are only as good as the hands holding them. Mm. Use disposable materials to learn. Yes. You are going to, if you are going to pursue art, you are going to go through a lot of sketchbooks, most likely. You're going to go through a lot of lead, a lot of pencils, a lot of, like, because I, I used, I used, uh, I think it was like 2B mechanical pencils that were like 0.5 millimeters. Like they were, they were thin. And I just bought a whole bunch of those, just used them constantly. 
Avoid dicks and pencils. The lead is always broken in sections. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mechanical pencils might be a little better. No bad about stick figures. As a storyboard artist, I still use stick figures. Yep, so stick figures are great. People, stick figures are really, really good. It shows that you have the basics of s skeletal structure. Not the full skeletal structure, but your brain is thinking about them. It's really good. Thing is, when giving compliments, keep it about the person you're complimenting. Don't make it about yourself. That is a very good lesson. Uh, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> Sorry, books. It's going to be a long VOD. Hi, Diamond. Snev, stick figures are literally very good to construct any pose. Art is a developed skill. It's not sensible to dismiss yourself as bad immediately. Yes. I showed an example of... Yeah, this. This is what... These are what I used to draw when I was a kid. I drew a fish. This is what my old heads used to look like because I never drew the anatomy underneath. And I drew balloons and boxes on birthday cards. Because my aunties and uncles loved them. Uh, and then I drew... I don't need these ones. I showed an example of how stick figures are very, very good. Or the base. You just need to plus them up a little bit, you know? There's the basic stick figure. Just add the shoulders and the hips, you know? Just little lines across help with the motion. And then from there, you can add a whole bunch of muscle. So if you can jump from here to here, you're already so far ahead. 2B wooden pencil recommended for digital art. <laughs> I wouldn't. I can't stop you, though. Two hours is great for sketching for me. Two uh, H is good for sketching. Two B is what I use for lining. I mostly just use uh, any pencil available that doesn't smudge. How do you get over the feeling of looking and searching for inspiration without feeling like you're copying what you see? Hmm. Feeling of looking and searching for inspiration. Copying what you see. I think that's actually something that's not uncommon. It. Well, it, to a certain extent. Feeling like you've, you're have you scared. I, I have sometimes a fear where if I create something, I will be worried that someone else will compare it to something that is pre-existing. Or my, if my brain saw it months ago and is just thinking of it now and thinking it's a brand new idea. I'm really afraid of that. But there's a difference between copying and and drawing, you know? I think... You just gotta not worry too much about it, which sucks. It's it's an awful answer, which is just like, relax. It's okay. Don't be mad at yourself for this. Don't be mad if someone else has thought of this concept or if someone else has done this concept already. It's okay. Not everything is a remix of a remix, but a lot of it is, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it just matters on your own remix, what you add to it. Now, it's amazing you can draw the same skill when you did when you were little. Well, I draw it better now, but like I understand, I, I knew what my thought process was when I was a kid, and a lot of it was I would draw the outline of a piece of art rather than the anatomy underneath it, so I understood what it would look like. Probably what you see because of your practice, yeah. Cool tip, use permanent sharpie on your tablet to get dark. <gasps> Ooh, Jimmy Snow. The fear. The fear that gets struck into my heart. Looks like Cove telling Honey that her drawing reminds her of X character. I used to have a classmate that would do that, and I got mad at them a bunch. And, like, I feel bad in hindsight because I was very sensitive about that, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, eh, it's fine. Hey, Dustin, how's it going? Doing good. You have to understand, Honey, most of us are actually horrible people. Raised in sarcasm and cynicism. Thus, we can easily insult babies. On the reverse side, makes us treasure the kindness we give and receive a lot. Kind of like the cute <laughs> Kindness of the cute girl. Thanks. Yeah. It's... The fun thing about art is it kind of forces you to not be so cynical. Because you gotta... You gotta really be into it. Not always, of course. You can do cynical art. But art really gets good. When you kind of let your walls come down and go, Hey, I want to draw this because I'm feeling it. I'm not going to criticize it as I draw. I'm not going to be harsh on myself. I'm just going to make something and let it exist. Not even on the internet. It'll exist for me. It is really cool. 
I mean, copying freehand, not tracing. Yes, is it? yeah. Copying and tracing are not the same thing. Uh, tracing is literally drawing over a piece to get the same image. Copying or referencing, not always the same, but sometimes they're interlinked, is... It's better in a way, especially for learning. Making sure I didn't miss any Q&A. Grew up tracing from books, but I never showed them. But it did help me as I worked on anatomy during that time, so I trained my hand to draw. Yeah, I used to do that too. I would trace uh, manga panels in my sketchbook. It was really good. It was great for learning. It helped me break down anatomy and, and how proportions worked for different characters. Evening, Ben. Banjo. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Burped. Sorry. My art style is basically bits and pieces of other people's art style. Uh, arms came from the mind. Yeah! You, just, you can learn a lot from the, the media you consume. And it can really infect you. And it's cool. It's cool to see what it influences people. That's why you buy cheap drawing tablets and don't have a screen on. I, was, I thought that was going to be like, oh yeah, you buy cheap tablets and then you get a better one once you know you're into art. It's like, I was like, yeah, that's exactly right. It's like, no, nope, that's that's not what you said. That's not what you said. Oh, everyone here, I found these cheap outline pens that are really good. Yeah, there's some really good outline art pens. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Fingers, but my walls are so comfy. They have all my favorite posters and my favorite angsty bands. Let the angst in. Let it out too. Overvaluing novelty, i.e. creativity, is just as harmful as overvaluing traditional forms. Both stunt to the artist. Novelty is not self-justifying in traditional forms to be overly restrictive of times. One must find a balance between tradition and novelty. Hmm. Yeah. My simple brain just goes like, Great, because it's fun. Make something because it's fun, and you like it. That's the best way to do it. I'm a little simple. One little question. How do you draw fur? Great question, actually. I'm, I don't know. I usually just draw triangles, then just wing it. I think like uh, some animal artists and furry artists might be a better reference than me. I usually draw more humanoid stuff. My sister used to trace anime on TV. Smart, big brain move. Son, I used to have trace. I used to trace manga art books. My old old books have indents in the pages along the line art. See, like, I'd, people are so scared of tracing. It's it's kind of frustrating because tracing as a learning tool and not posted to public is wonderful. It is an excellent tool to s break down how, like, the style of art that you like and seeing how it works, kind of breaking it down into pieces for you to consume and your brain to mulch together and spit out as a new art form, you know? It's awesome. Don't be afraid of it. But on the flip side, please do not trace art and then post it as your own. That is not a, not an ethical thing to do. Things sound like a burp. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, okay? It was a lot. <sighs> First so fun. It's fun. I just no good at it, snib. Draw fur, you must properly simulate and draw every single piece of hair. I think I'd rather not. All right, just real quick, I'm going to go over the lesson that we had today, and then I'll reopen the floor for some quick Q&A, and then uh, I'll let y'all get some rest. Just came here to find his voice again. It's been too long. Hey, Andromelk, how's it going? But yeah, so I went over how stick figures, absolute, absolutely powerful. Like, just, just add the little lines, perfection. You can basically add anatomy from there. They're so good. Keep them. Keep it up. Another example. And look at look at it's it's there. It's basically all there. Stick figures? So good. I don't wanna hear any stick figure disrespect. It is the building blocks of art. Or at least character art. A little bit of advice. You know, just brain tricks. If you have trouble focusing or you need some advice generally for art. Just do it. Sometimes it's hard. Just know that you're not making it for perfection. You're going to fail hard and fast, but you're going to learn faster. So the sooner you get it out, the better. What was next? Oh, yeah. Did some head breakdowns. See, this is how I used to draw heads. I didn't draw anything underneath. And so 
they lost a lot of their volume and structure. So breaking down what they look like and how everything cuts into nice pieces, you know? Very helpful. Also, draw simple eyes. It makes everything very easy to see and understand. That was kind of smooth. Oh, it was smooth. My brain? Yeah. Pretty smooth. There's a reason I never won Jummy's games. Again, if you're starting out to draw faces, I do highly recommend you stick with these kind of eyes. Two dots, eyebrow. If you want, you can go a little more complex. You can add little outlines for the eyelashes on the eyes if you'd like. However, I would still stick with this if you were learning. Just for simplicity and speed. Your song grab here? Hey C88, how's it going? Also, Joker, thank you for the 200. Good night, honey. I caught a cold, so I can't. Oh my gosh. Gets... I hope you recover. Get some rest. Will your divine model have wings? Most likely. I'm so excited. Because that's, that's the next one of mine. Currently working on Sky's model, but after that I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a break between my next model, so. Are there any tricks you know to keep lighting consistent across multiple figures or even on multiple textures on the same figure? I always have a hard time keeping, say, the shade of the folded clothing completes consistency. Hmm. That might come from experience and practice. Oh yeah, here's the lighting example. The highlights are on the same side of the eyes. See if the light's coming from here? They're on this side and this side. Not on the opposite. Be careful with mirror tools. Break to do my Exactly. But yeah, multiple textures keeping consistency. All I can recommend is um, creating a overlay layer for the full piece or the full character and then just drawing in blue. Uh, but for keeping it consistent, that I think that's just a practice thing. That'll just take some time and learning how shading works, studying shades, referencing real life pictures so you can see how shadows would fall if they were in that sort of natural lighting. How to drop buff arms. That's for another stream. I'll probably do an anatomy stream fairly soon. I really... I, I think my brain was really excited for this because like I do really love teaching. Um, so it's kind of a shame that I didn't become a teacher, but at the same time, I'm not upset with it at all because I get to teach in a different way. And this is really good because this information is now free. Everyone can use it and they can ask questions in real time. And it's really, really helpful. I like it. I can teach y'all how to draw abs. Uh, not gonna lie, I learned from Lao Van. Let me write down her name. Uh, you can check them out on Twitter. Very, very good at hyper uh, rendered abs as well as proportions. They're also really good at drawing teeth. So do check them out if you want to see that kind of art. And like you, you can learn because they, they do a lot of tutorials on how to draw hair and render as well as how to draw abs anatomy and like how to draw teeth from different angles. It's really helpful. Yes, yeah, son, abs are fun. Abs are very fun. Good night, croquet. There's also a question of how well you handle teaching uh, something you're passionate about. That is true. I don't, yeah. I don't think I would enjoy teaching the subjects I was planning on teaching. As well as being an art teacher for potentially elementary or even high school kids. I don't know how well that would go, quite honestly. Like, the fact that some schools make their teachers buy supplies for their kids, that wouldn't go well. But, but funny. But I am. I'm a little beefy. I got a little beef. Abs and teeth, my two weaknesses. Same here, Dave. Buddy. <laughs> Can't wait for how divine you'll look, though you already look incredibly divine. I think I look rather mysterious. But I am excited for the next model. I have some fun stuff planned. I'm testing out new technology, as, as I am with all my models. New tech. It's gonna be fun. Also, Modanova, thank you for the earwiggles. Uh, 
And Gula Dad, thank you for the hydrate. I'm gonna take a sip. In between hands are my kryptonite. Hands are pretty cool. I think this BRB suddenly needs to learn how to drop toothy ash buddy. Check them out! Check them out! They're really good! Alright. Let's go back to here. Basics. Whew. Oh. If anyone has any more questions, for sure, throw them out there. I will do my best to answer them. Great DP. Cute call the miss. Here we go. Been a while since it popped in. Welcome back in. Hope you're having a good time. We are like AI art generators choosing what images we're trained with, but much slower. Not at all. It's different. AI art is very different from from uh what's it called? Art done by people. It's very, very different. It's I I am not eloquent enough to explain how. <laughs> which is unfortunate because I want to be able to express how it's not the same, but I don't have the words for it. AI lacks intention. It's so, oh wait, I actually sh uh, one sec. I actually shared an example with Cove. That was really really good. Let me pull it up. I'm just pulling up Twitter real quick. Excuse me. Thanks, Zap. Glad he's coming on teaching stream. Yeah, I'm gonna probably do more teaching streams. All right, Cove. When did I send this? Here we go. This is a really good example. Uh, I will. I can only copy the picture. One sec. But I will. I will tag the artist as well. This. This is very important. This is a very good example of how AI art is different. Let me write down the artist's name. It is... Zed Edge. But yeah. This is a good example of how it's different, uh, visually speaking. Like, I, I, it's so hard to explain this verbally. Yeah, yeah, guys, this one. So. If you want to reference these pieces of art to create your own art, you could definitely do that as a person. You gain inspiration, or you gain inspiration, you take inspiration from them, and you create a new piece, you create something new. Like this. Like this clearly is inspired by these, but it's very much its own thing. Versus AI samples them and clips and cuts them together. This past on my timeline of Star Stream. Let me scroll. Yeah, it's by uh, Zed Edge. This is their art. It's I. Ooh, I want artists to to just like put their ads in everything they draw because it's so easy for stuff to get lost online. Especially the fact that this is their art, and I'm like, no, please, please, put it somewhere. Left one is so cool. Yeah, right. This is a good example of how it's different. Uh, but yeah, I'll just read this. Without references, humans can still visualize ideas, but AI cannot. Both benefit from reference, but AI depends on them. AI doesn't learn from art, it manipula manipulates art beyond recognition as a deception to appear new. Without consent or co compensation, the original artist's uh, AI art is theft. This is probably the best example I have found that visually explains why it doesn't work, you know? Ah, thank you, guy. Yes, if y'all want to check the, that out, that link out, that's their Twitter. Very, very good art, too. Super good. The AI art little one looks like a fever dream mixed with sleep paralysis. It does. AI art confections new art from existing ones. It's made up from existing art someone else did. It's not making new material. Yes, exactly. No worries, Diamond. It's 4 a.m. for you. Go back to bed. Sleep. That's You, you gotta sleep. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's pro that's probably the best explanation of a difference the difference between what AI does and what artists do. You collect art that inspires you, like a piece with a pose or lighting or a facial expression that impresses you. Yeah, the downside is um, I put them into a digital reference folder. However, my brain really likes physical things, so if I have a book with all the ref that's why I have like a bunch of art books. I have like the Art Book of Adventure Time. That is my favorite favorite art book 
I have a lot of favorite art books, but that one is probably the best one, in my opinion. Mainly because its style is simplified and it feels approachable, like everyone can do it, and I like that. Savage, I'm new here, you seem really cool. Do you teach art regularly? Yeah, usually like one to two times a month, yeah. Maybe more now, actually, because I've I've been really in a teachy mood. I wanna I wanna I wanna help people because a lot of the times I I see people who tune into the stream and they're like, I really want to get back into drawing. I don't know where to start, or like I can only draw stick figures, and I'm just like, okay, well, here we go. Let's start. Let's start this. Get it going, you know? Like collage based creation. I think so. If this is a repeat question. I apologize. Can the same techniques be applied to 2D pixel art? For the most part, yes, I think so. I haven't ex uh, messed around with pixel art before, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Echo. Okay, I only have one question left that's about styles. There's this artist with a unique style and she's cute, adorable, and cool. What was he saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Echo. I love you. <laughs> Echo, Clint. Bruh. Thing is, AI art is never going to be used professionally in corporate sense as it cannot be copyrighted or trademarked as current laws require a human to have created a thing. Good to know. I didn't actually know that. I would assume someone's tried, but I, I don't know how it actually goes. It's 2 p.m. in South Korea? You're up at a good time then. Getting the lines to properly align because they don't touch directly. Like a one to two line looks like a... Ooh. Yeah, lines are weird. Line art's weird. Just making sure I'm not missing any questions. Thanks for the info and inspiration. As always, the smiles and laughs. <laughs> Thanks, Dingus. I hope you've been having fun. It's actually rapidly changing, so I'm not sure if that explanation will work for long. It also doesn't help that AI art can also be ran through and refined by human hands, giving it a weird mix of human direction and AI skill. Yeah, but at its base, it is that, which is frustrating. This is a repeat question. I apologize. Don't worry about it. Chat's moving fast, and everyone's questions are real important. Can the same techniques be applied to pixel art? Yes. Okay. Books. You drove eight hours to get here? Jeez. Yeah. If after this, grab a snack and go to bed. Also, wonder. Thanks for stopping by and saying hi. Helping everyone to do very cute like you. Please use the cute tag. To... Fine. Fine. You may, if you insist, I'll try to use it. Thank you for this lesson. I will now use this useful information to draw attractive fiction women more better now. Nice. That's the goal, isn't it? Fun to hear you teach about things you're so passionate about. You get all bubbly and extra chatty and start talking extra fast. It's cute. Shush, <laughs> I'm I'm self-conscious, but I'm also very excited about it. <clears throat> uh, I feel like super called out by the getting back into art comment, but I'll accept the L. <laughs> it's not an L. That's good. It's it's very cool that I that people are getting back into art. Olive, your streams are giving me hope to keep going and like not give up when it doesn't turn out the way I want. Thank you so much for the stream. Can't wait for the next lesson. Red X, have fun drawing. It's time for me to sleep. I'll be sure to work on that homework. All right. Good night, Minosa. Dingus. Of course, I always have a swagalicious time in streams. <gasps> Why, thank you, Dingus. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm glad it's swagalicious. <laughs> oh, use the cute tag for every stream because it always applies. Mm. I tricked Honey to read that she's cute three times in one stream without realizing it. Oh. All right. All right, Neko, you got me there. Watching and listening to this made me pick up a line notebook and just start scribbling. Nice. Very stress relieving thing. Of course. I'm very glad it was stress relieving. I didn't miss any questions because I think for the most part, I'm good. Thanks for underscoring my point. I don't know if I did. I'd rewatch this lesson once it's up on YouTube. Sounds like everyone had a great night. I had a fun time. I'm glad I could teach y'all some things. I return from my hour long coughing fit to tell honey she's a sweetie and very cute. I hope your cough is better. I hope your cough is all right, Onyx. Your throat be better be okay. Your voice is stress relieving. Thank you. Never knew that until I started streaming, to be honest. I could probably put a class to sleep if I wanted to. 
I believe it's been over three hours. Yeah, it's been over three hours. I think it's about time I let y'all go to bed. I have, I have filled your brains with knowledge. You have learned so much. You've been a wonderful class and so attentive. And you've asked some really good questions too. I'm really, really, really glad that, <laughs> that y'all had fun and you learned. And his voice is like talking to a hug. <laughs> Thanks. Is mayonnaise art? Yes. Yes, it is. It's also an instrument. I think the best part of this teaching is the amount of attention you put into each topic of question. Thank you. Do we turn it in homework? I'd like to see other people's stuff. You can definitely put it in the Discord into Artisan's Table. There, that is a great place to put it and share your work. I did, I did take some time off of Discord this week because of Thanksgiving. I'm so tired. <laughs> But teaching made me super excited. Um, but yeah, like, Thanksgiving really tuckered me out. I had to talk to so many family members, and they all had asked the same question of like, what was your job? And I was like, illustrator. Yeah. And then I just left it at that. Thanks for telling me I'm a baby. We're all babies. I can go for another hour, professor, but I should rest, you know? Gotta rest up my brain. I've taken, I've put so much knowledge onto the page. Gotta rest it. So that way I can prep the next lesson. Because I don't know, I don't, I'm trying to figure out what a good jumping point off would be for the next session. Hmm. I've fallen asleep to your voice. Nice. Glad it's relaxing. That make me go to bed. I lit it on fire. Sleep on the couch. <laughs> also, Archie boy. Thank you for the sub. Welcome to the tavern. Voice is like a hug. That's why she gets the sub. <laughs> thank you. And Otaku Cowboy, thank you for the resub. Happy two months. Hey, two months, baby. My flag can change color. Nice. Ooh, I gotta update the badges soon. We're getting close to the next one. Electic, thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you very much. That is... That is a lot. We're wrap we're wrapping up. We're gently wrapping up the lesson in a nice little bow. So ah, freelance design. Oh yeah, baby. That's a big one. That's that's a good one. <laughs> Gonna get you out of this classroom so y'all can get some rest and sit on that information. Next class, digital painting 101. Ooh, even I'm not great at that. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe we'll do anatomy instead. Maybe we'll do studying muscles. <laughs> I like doing that. I actually understand that. What has to know? Breaking photos down to simple forms. Ooh, that might be pretty good too. Y'all got good ideas. Next session, how to draw abs. I might be too excited for that. Ah, uh, can we have a Christmas break? Of course, you may have no homework on Christmas break. What would, I, what would I give you homework while you're supposed to be resting? That would burn you out. Next session, Tomboy Honey Goblin Avatar. What do you mean? What do you mean y'all don't know I'm already a tomboy? <laughs> That's just how I dress normally. I'm all dressed up fancy for y'all's sake, so you can focus. So it's not distracting as if I'm dressed up a tom as a tomboy. <laughs> All right, let me take a quick look, see who's awake, because maybe I'll see if you can go to another artist and break down their style. There's, there is indeed a little, uh, some, some, some. Let's see. Hmm. Who is live? Let's go visit someone who's having a subathon. They're also debuting a new model with very, very good art. Let me just make sure that they are still there. One sec, I'm gonna turn down this. I don't know if they're there. Okay, I, I don't know if they're there. I think they might be sleeping. Never mind. Unfortunate. <laughs> All right. Uh. Let's go visit this person then. 
All right. Don't remember your Hey Honey clips on YouTube. It's been a bit. <laughs> I'm glad to see you going strong, and I hope this whole activity gives you as much joy and fulfillment as chat begets for being here. Oh, it's so much fun. I love it so much. I was so happy. Let's raid. <laughs> Thanks, Texan. Thank you for waiting. All right. Ooh, art class raid. That's a pretty good one. Wait, Jaden Animations has a Twitch? I didn't know that. Art class raid or school's out. That both they both work. They both work. Ah, beautiful, they're back. <laughs> See you later, Diamond. All right, they are back. Perfect. Let's go visit AI Candy. They have a new model. They're pro, uh, if I'm not mistaken, their pronouns are they, them. Just letting y'all know. Uh, oh, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. They use they, them pronouns. Just update. But they are having a subathon for their new model, and it is a lovely, lovely model. I think y'all will really, really like it. It is very nice. Jasper, you did not get expelled. You did no such thing. There was no expulsions. Just a little bit of detention where you gave yourself compliments. <laughs> Visit every stream with the hope that I can do a head pattern every time this button's not active. Oh. Just for you, Air Don Don. <laughs> mm. This is pretty good. Actually, this is pretty good. Jasper, no! <laughs> Neko, I see what you typed there. Y'all be y'all be good, all right? Be good. I'll see y'all soon. I'll put out a schedule on Tuesday. All right. You take it easy now. Let that brain rest. Get some sleep, and I will see you very soon. Okay. Bye bye. Y'all are cute.